Hi everybody, welcome to FNS Wrestling Podcast, episode 150. We are back down in the basement to talk about another week of professional wrestling and whatever other sidetracks we take that sometimes happen on this show. Occasionally. Occasionally. Gonna have a, some extra stuff on the show this week because it was this past weekend, right? It was weekend of pay-per-views weekend of slash wrestling. PLEs. So we'll talk about NXT, what was it, Battleground? Um, you even, watched a, you watched a bit. I watched all of it. We don't even need to talk about Saudi, really. No, the only I can do it right now. I watched Rollins and Rhodes, or sorry, Rollins and AJ, and it was really good, like really good, better than Rollins won, baby. A lot of stuff I saw from other companies. So, um, and then yeah, we'll talk about Double or Nothing, right? Yeah. And I didn't watch Impact this week because it was a really busy week. So, and I was out last night, right? Um, met my buddy Paul, went out to his place. A very big Canadian uh, comedian was playing in a pretty small place. So we went, not a small arena, but like a small town. It was a bit surprising to yeah. me, Carr. So he is super <laughs> offensive. Like he has no limits in his comedy. And he did almost two hours of a show because Paul goes to all kinds of comedy shows, right? So I was like, what can I expect? How long are we saying? He's like, oh, probably an hour. No, it was pushing too. But a uh, funny guy. Not sure it needed to be two hours, but a good show. It can't be funny for two hours. It, and it's sitting in a like an arena seat for two hours, no intermission or anything, right? So oh, okay. It was like going to a wrestling show, I guess, kind of, mm-hmm. but uh, no intermission. So that was fun. So yeah, I did not catch Impact this week. Um, oh, shucks. But I will run down the card of the next pay-per-view in my news as sort of to make up for it. But um, I don't know. Anything new and exciting with you? Um, You're just nah. looking at wrestling belts online yeah i'm looking at belts i want to get the rollins belt and i'm rolling on this podcast with a different laptop because my laptop got soaked in water and doesn't work anymore so that's cool now i'm on a really old tiny chromebook (laughs) so but well it should work just i feel like i've had to use it before too so there's going to be a service call for that laptop i guess right yeah but anyways, I don't know. Anything else you want to discuss before we get into this show? Uh, no, I mean, I saw some gameplay from the EW game that looks it looks pretty good. It does? It looks more like arcade for sure. Yes, which um, I think is kind of fun. Yeah, and so that'll make it more fun to play with people, right. I guess. And I saw a thing like you can skateboard around on Darby skateboard and like, oh, you actually can. like right. kick people with it and like jump on it nice. and stuff. And like I think there's exploding weapons and then like that it's like auto blood the blood's like crazy yeah, i saw apparently like it'll take a lot to a lot of blood and it, it'll take a lot to make your guy bleed yeah. too and also but except also, for moxley as soon as he enters the ring but it he, also looks like the exploding weapons are like i heard something about steam stampede but i'm not sure what the deal with that is nice That'd be and i was just telling you I and heard, they're intergender i heard on smart wrestling fan that he was saying if you have mm-hmm. battle pass you just get it you get mm-hmm. the game which is good, but then also I don't know if I can get the deluxe edition then. Or Without the pre-ordering, edition. right? Well, I could, I could get with a pre-ordering. It's just easier to pre-order and then... But then if I get it for free, then I can save money for the belt. So exactly. it's like... Exactly. Catch-22. Catch-22. Something like that. Something like that. Might mm-hmm. be a proper reference. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I guess we could move into talking about wrestling. Mm-hmm. First thing we'll do, take a look at some of the week's wrestling news and rumors. Okay, so ratings is the first thing we talk about in NXT this week. Average 607,000 viewers, up 5%. Earned a 0.17 in the key demographic, up 6.3%. And the source that I go to did not say they were up against anything because I think hockey and basketball have slowed down right as teams get eliminated. Mm-hmm. There's not so many games. So they may not have gone head-to-head. Best but... rating since? So I don't, didn't do any of that. Uh-huh. I know. The, the, my usual source didn't have it available, and then the, my backup source doesn't do stuff like that. So I miss That's it. Dumb. Um, this week's episode of Dynamite averaged 923,000, which feels pretty good, right? Pushing the million mark. Mm-hmm. So up 10.1%, but a slight dip in the de- uh, key demographic down to 029 which is 9.4% drop. And I don't know... What they were up against either didn't say, nor do I, do you want to just make up like a, it's the eighth best rating since two weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> Something. I didn't think that works. It doesn't, but that's pretty much as meaningful, I feel like, as yeah, some I of guess. the ones they put out there. Oh, that's true. Yeah. All right. What do you have for news? Okay. So probably the biggest news of the week was, um, there was rumors like, like a day, I literally, I swear I saw rumors like, I guess it would have been 
it, I honestly might have seen the rumors the day of or the day before. So either yesterday or Thursday, I saw yeah. rumors of Roman getting a new belt. And lo and behold, he got a new belt. Nice. And so the designs, it's interesting. It's it's super unique. Is so this the one I haven't seen yet. Yeah, it's okay. it's really unique, and they they went really balls out with it. Really something out of left field. It's oh wow, super Such like a departure. I can't believe they just strayed from their design just like that. And um, for those who haven't seen, I'm being fully sarcastic, and I hate it yeah. because. It's literally the WWE title with a gold-backed front plate. Right. And it's, it says Undisputed Champion. That's it. It's a very like, slight adjustment it's, on the normal. And thing. I would argue it looks worse. Yeah. Like, I would, all, I would almost rather the blue belt. Like, wow. And I don't, I don't think the blue belt's bad. I think that's a lot better than that. I don't that. think I it's think, terrible. I think this is like, it's just like, it's partially because I don't think it looks great to begin with. And then it's also the laziness of it. Like, yeah. I don't love it. And... I don't know, it looks dumb. The only like the only upshot of that is that the actual WWE Championship it said World Heavyweight Champion on it yeah. because they used that as the unified title when they right after the WWE title and the original Big Gold were yes. unified. So technically, until this belt came in, there were two titles because Rollins belt and right. the WWE title that said World Heavyweight Champion on it. So that was kind of the annoyance for me. But redundancy. Yeah. So like I don't love this belt, and I think it pales in comparison to the new World Title. Yeah. Because I think that looks awesome. Yeah. I think that's a really nice design, and it's actually different. It's gonna grow um, on me. I don't love it yet, but the, I think it'll the one grow on Rollins me. has. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I think I thought it looked a little weird the first time I saw it on him. Like I think it looks nice. So just, it'll take some time to get used to someone like wearing it. For sure. But I think that design's like leagues ahead of this because this is just changing the front plate and right. It, that's it, pretty much it. it. And so I'm not thrilled with this. And they already have that on shop too. And like, if, it's very as on someone who would like to get a belt, I don't, I don't, I don't really want that one. Not that one. No. So that that was interesting. Um. I took something, I guess it was probably from SmackDown, that there's four Money in the Bank qualifying matches. Did you see this? Set for SmackDown? Next week. I think next week, yeah. Mm -hmm. So women's division, you're going to get Meechin and Bailey. Yeah, I saw. And EO, EO and, and Shotzi, right. which you'll love. So obviously EO wins that, yeah. I would think. And then men's side, did you hear that? Uh, Butch and Corbin, I know, is one. Correct. And Escobar and Mustafa Ali, which could be a good, oh. good match at least, um, right? I'd probably say Butch and Escobar get in. Cause Ali is just probably... based on what Ali is doing right now that we'll talk about yeah. later. Yep. Um, I'm really interested in Butch going in because yep, me too. Could Pete done him anytime? And also the Money in the Bank's in London. Oh, it's interesting. I, right. It's gonna depend because based on what two of them are doing, not just one. Right I, now, I right? Yes. Yeah. Corbin's there too. Yeah. They're both. That's interesting. That's in, yeah. I just realized. Hey, both of those guys show up on NXT this week. Not yeah. to spoil my talk about so it. So I'm. I like the. I'm interested to see what they do with Butch in there. Yeah. Because I feel like it has to be Butch, I especially hope so. with it being in London. Push Butch, it's time. Pete Pull the Dunn. trigger. I just like. I was just watching that in your house five way again. Because mm -hmm. that match is awesome. It was. And just seeing Pete Dunne is just. That's the one where they nice. got rid of Cross for quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. Of it, right. Yeah. And they did all those sick combo that. moves and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I I miss Pete Dunne. Me too. I, th Love I think this done. could be an interesting. He's my favorite uh, wrestler in the world for a while. Uh, yeah, he was awesome. I don't think he'll win, but like, no, you could Pete on him anytime. Raise his profile. Yeah. Uh, it's you. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, all right. Um, so do you hear who's close to coming back in AEW? Oh yes, that's in my news too. So you go get, ahead, uh, Layla Hirsch. Oh no, sorry. Yeah. Oh nice. I saw Layla Hirsch is reportedly close. She should be in Blackpool. That would be cool. Yeah. I think she'd be the perfect. She would. She could take the TBS title from Statlander sometime because she wouldn't have to talk. And she, uh, yeah, and she has history of Statlander. Right. That was her last thing. Yeah, she's cool. I think she would fit in. I well forgot with about her. Like, yeah, me too. Big time. Because I okay, I'll jump to mine then. So I thought you were talking about this. Someone else in AEW is expected to make their return. I feel like you told me about that. I would be really happy about one of my favorites ever. All oh, right, Pack. Pack. Uh, so after three months out of action, Pack is expected back yeah. soon. I've been wondering where and he it is, was, but then I feel like it was because of the. It was the nose, right? Because the nose was legit, right? Yeah. Well, I knew it was legit, but I figured it was a combination of that, which usually it's. But then he also wrestled like pretty much seven straight matches or whatever, right. or like six straight matches, I guess. After that, so like that couldn't have been like obviously they're protective of it, but I think they took it off once or twice, right? They did. So it couldn't have helped. No. So yeah, uh, he's awesome. I hope yeah. they have room to use him because he's coming back. Death Triangle, I guess. I don't know. Or yeah, I kind of want him to be heel again. Yeah, me too. I don't know. 
Hey, me too. E- either or. And then go after. Actually, I would death triangle for a bit because he's he's coming back off an injury, and then you can yeah. see where you want to go from there. Yep. Um. Next is um CM Punk's coming back Yay. officially. Yeah. We're all super thrilled. Um. Yeah, I'm just hoping he stays on Collision because then I won't have to review it. Right. I, are you gonna watch it though? I'll probably watch Collision. Yeah. We can. Cherry I'll check pick it out it. at least once. Yeah, I think so too. Probably. Well, I'll I'll probably use the rampage method. I'll, yeah. We'll try to watch it for a few weeks and we'll see where we stand. Hopefully, it's better than Rampage, so we're more I feel motivated. Like it kinda has to, to be. Yeah. I think so too. If it's not, they're in trouble. Yeah. Like if it's two hours of Rampage, I don't think that's what people want. <laughs> Which but, they do sometimes. Yeah, I know. Uh, the only other thing I have is since I'm not covering Impact, I've got the card for next Friday's Against All Odds. So we've got Eddie Edwards taking on Frankie Kazarian. Sick. Perazzo and Trinity against Giselle Shaw and Savannah Evans could be okay um tag team champions abc bay and austin are taking on the good hands that could be a good match i mean i don't think the good hands have a chance probably but i'm interested in seeing watch them them win it (laughs) masha slamovich and killer kelly in a dog collar match not my favorite type of match but those two women are pretty vicious i might check that out i haven't seen a women's dog collar match before they're so their whole thing is they just want to fight each other non-stop so they're gonna do that i guess um trey miguel's defending the x division championship against chris saban that'll be a good match i'm sure and then an 8-4-1 match i saw that which is eight man tagged a four-way oh is that what it is i think so yes why what did you think it was it just i i had no idea it's just got the people listed in it it's got it's like kind of related to i guess odds or whatever i don't or i don't know okay actually i don't know what it's related to but like it's so it's like an eight-man tag with the two teams or whatever yeah. then the winning team gets chucked right into a four-way oh, immediately I, okay okay and then Impact. winner gets a title match right yeah there. okay so i think i feel like that would be the main event that's interesting that's, like a, that's a big boy so, that's actually not a bad concept did, considering no. their their track record with they, right but they're willing just, to try stuff at least yeah not everything's good at least on paper this isn't completely stupid as long as you recognize once you do it it's dumb and stop doing it or fix it which they don't then usually keep, sometimes they don't takes, <laughs> my, takes a few tries so have you heard who's in it i did see but i forgot all this i assume wins bully ray gresham heath moose uh moose mike bailey swan and pco nice so to me that looks like a nick aldis win at this point i don't know sounds like or unless they don't want that yet right because macklin's maybe they although want the thing after run. this is slam anniversary so they might actually it's true because i know trinity versus perrazzo's for slam anniversary yep. so that's kind of like they're that's where they have to tag because they're future opponents correct to build up to that mm-hmm. uh that is all i have um i got a few more go for it um so uh, more money in the bank stuff is that Ricochet and Nakamura qualified on Raw, so they're in. Oh, nice. And then LA Knight is also in. I did see I that. I think he's probably the front runner right now. Yeah. And then I also was going to mention they have Butch and Corbin. Yep. And then, yeah, that's it. And then uh, Rollins has his first challenger for next week. Oh, yeah? Did you see who it was? No. It's a main event player. Who? Like, uh, the, remember, he's a... They're gonna, they see him as a big player. A big player. Or whatever they said. I don't know. It's Damien Priest. Oh, oh yeah. You're right. Yeah. Main event getting... player or whatever it was. Yep. So that's that's not bad. No, that should be okay. That's not bad. Other than, like, I don't think Priest has any chance. No, at all. but I'm sure they're testing him out, right? Can yeah. he hang? What's the reaction mm-hmm. if they're po- getting ready to pull the trigger on him? It's good information. Are they to have. the opener again? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, speaking of that title, we're clearing things up here okay oh here we go i heard to this make was this coming. perfectly clear okay according to their website itself rollins is the inaugural world heavyweight champion not the new champion of the old lineage this okay. is this is separate and i've got multiple reasons here so first off when i was looking on w shop canada the first thing advertised to me was a rollins shirt related to the title and it said inaugural world heavyweight champion okay right which would lead you to think this is a new title. It's fresh. It's new. That is what that it's word its own means. Thing, right? Exactly. I think. Which that put me into confusion for a bit. But then I was looking on their site just because I was curious. And so they have like a section under like, so when you go to Superstar section, they have all the champions, right? Like, so they got like Roman Rollins, both women's champions, Gunther Theory, the tag champ photos that I just showed you because mm-hmm. they're awesome. <laughs> then all the NXT champions. And then they got like all the belts and like the timelines, right? Like for Universal title, they have 2016 to present. WWE title, 1963 to present, 
both women's health or t- 2016. You get it, right? Like yeah. how long they've been active. Right. Or, for example, like um, a defunct title, like, um, well, let me find one. Like the Divas title, 2008, 2016, right? Right next to the Divas title is the World Heavyweight title. Okay. But the, the big gold, the one that they used that they used till 2013, this one says 2002 to 2013. And then if you scroll back up to the current titles, <laughs> we have the one Rollins has, which is 2023 to present. This proves that these are two different championships I with two different lineages. One of them is defunct. One of them is active. Definitive. And Rollins is the first champion of the new title. So this is, it's definitive. That case closed. This is, yeah, case closed. And you can't disagree. This is their own sources. This is their, their shop website yes. and their official site. So this is on them. If they say that it's the same belt, it's not. This is on them. And is this a controversy online? Are people saying that because well, debate? Because that it is? when they revealed the title, they said it was a new championship, right? But right. then remember, Triple H was saying it carry on carries on the lineage of the old title, right? So then I was like, that's kind of, that's contradictory. So what are you? Right. Wh- which is it, right? And you could say like, oh, this one's the present one because it's a new design, right? No, because the Intercontinental title, for example. It shows the current design, right? Yeah. But it still says 1979 to present. Like right. it's still, it's still dating back to when. Just because it's a different design doesn't mean it's different. So this, it, it's a it different started title. Started in can, 2023. I cannot right stress there. enough. It's a different championship. Rollins is the first champion. Right. It may share the same name, but the W title had that name too. And that, Fair. like, this is not the first time they've done a world heavyweight title. So Rollins is the inaugural champion. It's that is. You heard it here, folks undisputed undisputed well wow. he's not undisputed but <laughs> you get There's it. much dispute he, yeah. yeah but that is it case closed i win well done i agree with you i yeah. that's pretty ironclad case there i would say and it'd be different if and also they talked about it on the bump and he was in an, another inaugural title match so that's three things from them from their own i brains. win you win uh was that, was that your last thing that was it all right well Let's move into talking about some actual wrestling, and we're pretty in-depth review coming up here of AEW Dynamite. Oh no, that's wrong. We should do the pay-per-views first, so we'll go and talk about NXT Battleground and AEW Double or Nothing before we get into Dynamite. So let's talk some pay-per-views right about now. All right, so we're going to start out with NXT Battleground, which you saw some, but not all. I don't even think most. So I watched all of it. You were there for a bit of it. We'll see what you remember and what you don't. So just going through the matches, the show opened with Wesley versus Joe Gacy versus Tyler Bate for the North American Championship. Um, so I haven't loved the story coming into this just because it's this... Uh, Joe Gacy has driven a wedge between them, but all it really was was Tyler Bate admitting, yeah, I wouldn't mind, even though we're friends, a shot yeah, at your title. And which, then that was I don't like know why you're so offended. the betrayal of all betrayals. So, but anyways, three, uh, the shield who talented wrestlers, at least. So hoping for some good things here. You just a couple highlights here and there. My notes are not very detailed. You did get a, I think you saw that airplane spin on Gacy while he was doing a giant swing to Wesley. Yeah. Not that it was, he got it going very fast or anything, but I mean, the fact that you could even attempt that is pretty impressive. For a man of his stature, too. Exactly. For a big, strong boy, ironically. <laughs> yeah. And then you had Bate and Gacy almost working together and going for, like, double handspring, whatever, clotheslines, but Lee ducked those and then hit cardiac kicks to both of them. Actually looked pretty good. For a pair of near falls, he tried to pin one and then the other one. And then eventually he does hit the cardiac kick again to Gacy as Gacy was going for his handspring clothesline yet again, and Lee pinned Gacy there after about 12 minutes. And I thought this was a good match and a smart choice to open the show. This is the type of energetic kind of match you're going to hope for in an opener. And Lee continues just to have a really impressive run as the champion here. And everyone else did a good job as well. Gacy's like the the sneaky opportunistic heel, right? Looking Mm -hmm. for any advantage. And Bates just really good in the ring. And... It's about Lee surviving somehow these types of things to keep on defending this title all the time. Really similar to what Orange Cassidy is doing, right? Um, yeah. It's the fighting champion who just is constantly in a match. So they found ways, to, and I like it because it wasn't like 
triple threats are getting a lot better right it used to be like one guy's out of the ring and the, and they just kind of the yeah they've definitely go. like tweaked the formula they find to ways better. to yeah incorporate all three here which i thought so a, a very fun opener and it this officially gives lee the most successful uh title defenses for any north american champion so did you watch this match i don't remember if you had thoughts i remember saw a bit of it but i don't really remember much yeah. so i'll just keep going yeah uh, we then we had Noam Dar taking on Dragon Lee in an Her- Heritage Cup rules match, which quickly are what if you want to run those down six rounds, right? It was six rounds, like they're three minutes each. Uh, first to two, first to two pinfalls or submissions, uh, breaks in between, twenty second break between rounds, DQs. and if a pinfall happens, that round's over. Yeah, yeah, cut type of thing. And then if it, it ends in a tie, ret- champ retains right. and draw. Right, so. I've really liked these matches. They grew on me a lot in uh, NXT UK. Starting out, I was kind of like, this is weird, but they were really good matches. And I think a lot of it was because it was uh, strong wrestlers going for it generally, mm-hmm. which helps out, right? But anyways, um, Dar got the first pinfall by stacking up Dragon Lee off a roundhouse kick. And then, remember, Dragon Lee hit, I don't know if it was a tilt to world DDT or something, but he ended up just kind of, I was surprised it got a pinfall to tie oh. it up. Remember it was some sort was of something. tilt the world know. slam thing. I wasn't even sure if it was what he meant to do. I don't. I don't. But know. Anyways, it was something weird. Looking. It did look impactful. He picked up a fall there, and then you had Oro Mensa run down uh, because on NXT the show Dar had been trying to find somebody to come down to ring with him, and he'd asked Mensa, and he said no, and he asked Lash Legend, and uh, I forget Miss Jackson, and they implied Chikara. they implied no. So Mensa shows up here. Um, and then you get Dar cheap shotting Dragon Lee with the back elbow after the third round, right? And then yeah. he's just like, I didn't hear the I didn't hear the bell sort of thing, which was kind of funny. It was a very his back elbow strikes are nice. Um then you had Mensa pushing the ropes towards him at one point to break up a pinfall. And then um Fraser's there sort of getting in Mensa's face about it. They start brawling and they got thrown out and head to the back. And then you had Wesley missing a head scissors attempt, and that he landed pretty badly on the floor. Uh, Dragon the fi- Lee? Yes. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> I have to clarify. Uh, so Dragon Lee hit a German suplex, a knee to the jaw, and a sit out powerbomb for a near fall. Jakara Jackson then runs to the ring in Last Legend. So this is the reveal that all three of these, I guess, are working with Dar now. Um, so hit Dragon Lee with a bucket in the back, and then that allowed Dar to hit the Nova roller kick. And he picks up the pinfall, keeps his beloved cup in just under 12 minutes. I like this match, um, not as much as some Heritage Cup matches, but the crowd is really dead. The crowd, that's uh, so exactly my next line is, but the crowd did not get behind this and didn't seem interested in it for whatever reason. Um, I think Dar's looking awesome since he's come back in ring, out of ring. Like he's really polished as a wrestler now. Lots of he can work any style. I feel like other than maybe a powerhouse, I guess. Um, and Lee is always impressive and looked good here too. How do you feel about this faction? I don't love it. You don't love it? Just like, I don't mind him like if it was Mensa, but yeah. I don't think you need the other two. I, I'm kind of intrigued and I actually believe in Dar's ability to somehow make this. Like he made Alicia he Fox can make it work, interesting, yeah, but... right? So, um, I'm interested to see, but I do like the structure of these matches. I think that more importantly, the Heritage Cup is an awesome prop for Noam Dar right now, right? So the way he carries it around like a baby and talks to it and kisses it, I think is awesome. Perfect for what he's trying to do. Um, there was a lot going on with other people in this match, which isn't my favorite, but it makes sense for Dar to cheat and have people, right? So yeah, I liked it. Uh, then one of my favorite matches this weekend, I don't think you watched it, did you? A bit, I thought you started and then you left. Uh, was the last man standing match no, between Ilya Dragunov and and Dijak. So this match was was pretty nuts. Dijak, on his way to the ring, told a family to get out of the arena because they don't need to see this, like with kids there, I guess. Um, at one point, Dijak, you were here for this. He pulls out a table at ringside, right? And he's sort of holding it up in front of himself. And Dragunov just flies through the table and... Um, he is bloody immediately, right? Yeah. He cuts his chin. The camera cuts away from quite a long time and just focuses on like Dijak selling for quite a while as I guess they're cleaning up um, Dragonov. And so we had Dragonov DDT Dijak on the steel steps, but it also sent his own back into the steps in the process. Um, we had, he hit a coast to coast Dragonov did with the steps in front of Dijak in the corner that was nice. You had a hard choke slam of Dragonov on the apron. A vicious kendo attack from Dijak ended up breaking a stick. 
And then the finish came when Dragunov jumped off of the steel steps with that forearm to the back of the head that he does to die Jack's head while it's on top of a steel chair. So that was, a, I thought, a pretty good like death blow, if you want to call it that sort of thing. Um, mm-hmm. Dragunov ends up getting up around eight count and die Jack could not. So Dragunov wins after 16 minutes. And this was a vicious, bloody I'll, match. I'll the thing I, forgot. I, I thought this match was fantastic. It was my match of the night on a show that I thought had some good work on it. So... It's just Dragunov's intensity, right? Like, it's unmatched pretty much now. We picked all of these so far. Nice. And it adds, I think, significantly to dramas of matches like this. And Dijak's a really talented big guy, right? And they beat the hell out of each other for like 16 minutes here. And I think it's a match people should check out because I I really like this one. Um, I guess I'm sort of giving away a little bit of the future. But this... The Pillars 4-Way and the Anarchy in the Arena are the ones from this weekend that I'm like, if you just need to cherry pick, this is what you do, I think. Uh, So awesome match. Then you had the NXT Tag Team Championships, Gallus defending against the Creed Brothers. Um, Not much going on here. Julius had one spot where he hit like a series six to eight belly to belly overhead releases with kip ups in between. Like just this guy's ridiculous. And then then it's like, Standing moonsault from him, and Julius did a really nice standing. Um, no, no, he Julius was the shooting star, and Brutus was the moonsault, both really clean. And right after that sequence, looked really good. Um, Brutus jumped off the, the top, obviously hit a Brutus ball spot on both the Gallus, and then Ivy Niles stopped Joe Coffee from interfering at ringside. And then Ava shows up and sends Ivy into the, I think it was the ring post. So that's just enough to allow Gallus to hit Julius with, I think they're calling it the Gallus Gate now, which is kind of, I don't know, feels kind of lazy. Yeah, I use this to start Ava wrestling. But it was just under 10 minutes, I feel like, probably, yeah. Yeah. I, I thought this was pretty disappointing. I honestly remember I talked about the Gallus Dyad match a couple of weeks ago. I really, really liked it. I think it was considerably better than this match, unfortunately. Just. There was that little bit of Julius's freakish athleticism, but then the rest felt pretty standard to me. It didn't have any sort of big fight feel. And I've been enjoying Gallus more lately. Uh, and the Creeds sometimes have some awesome matches, but I, something about this was not, not great for me. Um, NXT Women's Championship, Tiffany Stratton and Lyra Valkyria. So you had, this was the story of Lyra Valkyria's already injured knee from the vicious attack by Cora Jade after Lyra won their match last week. And I think that really helped this match because it got quite a bit of time. I think this is probably Stratton's longest match, I'm going to guess. So she's obviously targeting the knee, slammed it into the apron, ran her knee first into the ring post out on the floor, ripped the knee brace off, like threw it at commentary, I think. And then you had Stratton catching Valkyria later with a diving crossbody. She goes for the fireman's carry slam, but Lyra reverses it into a crucifix, gets a near fall there. Um, her leg buckles going for a roundhouse kick, Valkyria that is, and then avoided the prettiest moonsault ever, ever and did hit the oh, kick. That's, that's called. But nice. yeah, it's good, right? Um, Stratton got a foot on the rope, and the finish comes with another rolling fireman's carry, which leads directly into the prettiest moonsault ever, which Stratton does nail. She wins after 16 minutes. I heard so she got a big ovation backstage. She, she, I, this match was like really good, I thought. Um, I, and I think Valkyria is really good and that she could have some great matches with other talented women. She needs some new gimmick or something, right? But, and Stratton looked really good here too. And again, I think this was, she's the right choice to win, obviously. And that the story of the leg injury really helped. It gave Stratton just a focus in this, right? And, um, mm-hmm. and Valkyria did it to nitpick it. It's one of those like, She's selling her leg and selling her leg, but then she's kicking, you know what I mean? So it's a little bit of that is frustrating. But um, overall, I thought this was a lot better than I expected, got more time than I expected. And we both picked that. I think Stratton just she's main roster ready. Like she could go to more. I hope she doesn't because she's she's cool, but um, she's good enough for sure to go. So sorry, we're we're all we're all we're still tied up. We've all picked everything. Uh, Then the main event, the NXT championship match, Carmelo Hayes. Talk about the mask. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, versus Braun Breaker. My first note is Braun in a hoodie and half wolf mask, right? Like a wolf mouth and nose mask. And it looks really silly. Could we It agree? looked even worse when he took the hood off because then it's just like yeah. his whole head with that it's, on it. It was horrible. It was a, not a good look. It um, reminded me of NXT 2021 Ember Moon. <laughs> not in a good way. No. 
You have Melo attacking Braun right away and kicking his left knee repeatedly. Melo went for a suicide dive and he was short and he looked like Braun had to like move in and catch him to save him from breaking his neck. It looked bad, but he was okay. Then you had Braun hitting belly-to-belly -belly suplex uh, and then some other suplexes. He hit a Frankensteiner. They did the anti-air spear spot again, and it looked amazing and sounded amazing. The yeah. slap of it was, it looked great. Uh, and then Mello ended up countering a delayed vertical into a DDT that I thought was a pretty cool looking uh, counter. And then another counter near the finish here, Mello countered Braun. Goes for an inside cradle for a two count. Then he connects with three super kicks and like a springboard DDT. Goes up top and hits, what is it, nothing but net, the big old leg drop for the win it is. after 14 minutes. And that's what gets me my win. If that you won, you, you, fool. Don't even, you don't even watch it. You fool. Right? Uh, this was good, and I thought it was better than their that's previous. That's what we call a clean sweep. Nice. Because remember, I didn't love their previous one. It was just something No, missing. that's why I didn't care about this one. And it, this one was better, but I still think that like it, I don't know. Braun is more interesting, ever, getting better and better as a heel. The crowd was behind Hayes for sure because it's his hometown, but there's probably a better match in here somewhere, um, and it paled in comparison to Dragunov and Dijak for me. That stole the show easily, but a solid championship main event, I guess. I, I still miss Melo as a heel, right? And I feel that that's his future, the arrogant, smack-talking heel who is actually like awesome in the ring. Mm-hmm. Um, so I hope they go back to it at some point. Overall, entertaining show, really quick and easy to watch. Dijak Dragunov was the highlight. Um, opener women's match was good. Heritage Cup I liked as well. Main event, like, nothing terrible. The tag match was a disappointment. Uh, I gave it a B plus, not takeover level, because that's, like, that's a special level, they right? They haven't hit that in a long so time. So it's really hard to go into A range, because takeovers were A's and A pluses and A minuses all the time. Right. So, um, at worst, but a good a show. bad takeover is a B or B plus. And I will say, top to bottom, I may have preferred this to double or nothing. It's close, just because it was shorter and just like as a, a pound as for a pound. Package. Right. However, there was a couple of things on double or nothing that were spectacular. Right. So it's a hard for me to say. Like as a whole. Yeah, as a whole. All encompassing kind of thing. And actually, that will segue us into talking about that, I guess, right? So, um, yes, talking about double or nothing. First note I had is Jack cheers a different set. You can talk about that. And I'll say, oh, yeah, water. it was nice. Well, I just found it funny because Dodie's like, oh, yeah, we could, but like, why don't, why don't we just put a big screen? Mm -hmm. Like, why don't you just put a big screen, you know? So they own, the only reason Backlash had a different stage is because it was in the big Puerto Rico like stadium kind of thing. Right. So they used like the curve ramp stadium set kind of thing. And even then it was pretty similar to the Rumble stage. I would argue it was a little different from what I remember. Mm -hmm. But I, I would say it's pretty much the So same. how the double or nothing one And looked. then sorry, and then the Saudi one that was the day before. Yes. That was different from the usual big screen, but it was I also kind of a big screen. And then also, I'm pretty sure it was identical to the Elimination Chamber set from 2022, which was Saudi. So they, they only just keep it there. They only, yeah. Honestly, <laughs> you want to ship it back and forth overseas, or you just put it in a warehouse there and yeah, pull it out. Exactly. Like they and they only change their sets for Mania Stadium shows or Saudi, basically right. when they kind of have to. Yeah. Anywho, uh, the AWs was nice because they ever since they changed the Dynamite set at the beginning of the year, they've been using a lot more screens, mm -hmm. which like. It's fine, but and so I don't love the dynamite look a ton. Like I think it looks solid, but I miss the tunnels. Yeah, I think the tunnels was a really cool I do look. Too. I like the tunnels, and I I just like like the simple double trons and the tunnels. I think that was really cool. And honestly, I would still go back to that if I were them. Um, but and I think Revolution used the same stage. But anyways, they used a different like layout of screens this time. It, it just looked really nice. Like mm -hmm. they had like a like a a couple on the top each side, and like a big one kind of going down the middle, and then two more at the bottom. Like. It was a really nice look, and I thought it made it look like feel a little bigger, and I just yeah. like the difference of it. And it for sure, nice. just to feel special in some right. way, it different. Just, whatever. It looked different and it looked good, so that's yeah, good. Overall, I thought this show was kind of marred by a weak middle and um, a lot of extracurricular stuff in a lot of matches, right? Mm -hmm. Which is not my favorite. I don't want to say it felt WCW late, but um, there was a lot of stuff going on. I also didn't think Jr. added anything. I think he was only there for the first half mm -hmm. and then gone. Uh, he frustrates. He just annoys me more than anything at this point. He just seems like he's kind of bitter and not having that much fun anymore. But anyways, the opening match on this was the Battle Royal for the inter uh, international title. 
yes I was, out. almost said intercontinental which would then be they gotta crazy. defend it in like a casino royale because that's leveling up that's leveling up exactly so i have a few notes here and there nothing crazy the mogul embassy wait outside the ring, right? Their strategy is to not go in, which I don't understand why more heels don't do that because it makes a ton of sense to me. Uh, Com- a commander did his thing, right? Out to the floor. The Lucha Brothers, I, these are my notes, the Lucha Brothers do their thing to people. Cage finally comes in, does power spots, sometimes to multiple people in succession. Um, you've got Jay White and Juice Robinson just can't quite eliminate Starks as obviously they're targeting him. Swerve finally enters, goes right after Keith Lee, and they fight for a while with some pretty decent action. You get Trent, right? He sacrifices himself to keep Cassidy in there. Uh, he took a big boot from Bill, right? To I think so, yes. Um, to avoid being, a, or to sort of, to save Cassidy. Because then there's the random triple threat on Dynamite. Right. Brian Cage eliminates Keith Lee, and Keith Lee is super angry enough that maybe that's where a direction they're going. It sort of felt well, like almost. They, they're still dragging on Swerve versus Lee. Right. It looks, it looks like that's not quite dead i don't know no. bullet club lucha brothers face off for a bit penta accidentally eliminates his brother right which was interesting i don't know if that's a breadcrumb of anything ever but uh they kind of dropped the whole like potential death triangle heel thing because packs out right because that was an interesting thing i would love that. a while ago but, but i feel like it's almost house of black adjacent so mm. similar right um starks appears sorry spears white as White tries to eliminate Penta, Starks then, and then eliminates White. White attacks and runs him into the guardrail outside. Rhodes hits a destroyer to Brian Cage on the apron. Um, you get Bill, Swerve, and Orange left sort of skipping ahead quite a bit here. Bill um, wants to eliminate Cassidy, so Swerve sort of lets him try, but then obviously double crosses and shoves Bill out instead. And that leaves Swerve and Orange Cassidy and... I thought the action between these two was awesome, and it made me really want a match. The final two? two, yeah, yeah. I thought it was really that was like the perfect like battle royal mini match. Yeah, they, yeah I love the end of this. So mm-hmm. um, they sort of battle on the apron for quite a bit, and then I like this detail a lot too. They find a way to have Orange Cassidy win with one of his lazy kicks, right? Because you've got Swerves like leaning off the apron, just although holding Swerve should have t- done that because Cassidy was hanging out before too. So it annoyed me that Swerve didn't do that. And so it almost looks like Cassidy's setting up for something bigger, and then he just does a lazy kick and barely kicks his hand off, and he ends up retaining here. Um, I thought this was a pretty good battle royal, right? Nothing, nothing super memorable, but. There was some good action along the way, and I liked the final few minutes I thought were great. Um, we got several storylines furthered, which is what they need to do, right? So I didn't know maybe Lee and Cage is setting something up, but definitely White and Starks got more time, right? Um, it almost felt like now Big Bill and Swerve could have a little angle if they wanted to, based mm-hmm. on his double cross. You got Bullet Club and which Lucha kind Brothers of that faced off three-way. a bit. Um, and then I thought, yeah, the lazy kick finish was a pretty cool idea. Mm. I, it, it was more like entertaining than hot yeah. opener but it's a solid it. battle royal and like everything in there was fine but then i think the finish yeah like elevated the, the end bit like elevates it to like a pretty good one like for a battle royal good for what i would expect i think so too right and so yeah and i was wrong and i was right no switchblade one nothing Woo. then we move into the unsanctioned match between quiz Chris Jericho, <laughs> Chris Jericho. Oh, I thought you were gonna say question. And Adam Cole, and this is where this show enters a bit of a lull for me. I don't know if you. Yeah, we haven't just really a, talked just a about little. it much. Um, so Sabu, explain this reason. to me for reasons. But he's in, he's with Adam Cole. But he's an enforcer, right? And I think he was even on the graphic for Cole when he came in. Yeah. But he's the impartial enforcer somehow. But anyways, he doesn't last long, right? He ends up going through a table within like a couple minutes and then fights Brawl. Who did he go through, Paige? Oh, what? With Sabu. Sabu. Did he go through? He went through, he did his thing over the, through somebody on a table. I don't know. I forget who it was. But anyways, and then he's gone. All the extra people sort of brawl to the back. Oh, it was, sorry. It was um, Menard, I think. Oh, why'd you say Paige? I don't know. I was confused for a page who uh, <laughs> soraya no um, that's what i thought and i was like that doesn't so then they all brawl so. to the back and are gone so sabu was promoted and whatever and then was there for like five minutes maybe i don't know everyone's got the whole interference is weird because i'm glad it went away but like it's just too. weird how it just went away 
So Jericho lands awkwardly early on, and Cole immediately uh, targets that. Cole gets suplexed off the apron to the floor, and then Jericho's in control for quite a bit. And I thought, in my note, it wasn't very interesting. Jack isn't even watching, is my note at this Yeah, point. I was barely paying attention. It wasn't Then they riveting. get a fire extinguisher involved, and Cole has trouble, like firing it so jericho has to stand there staring at it waiting for it to get sort of blasted in the face by this so that wasn't perfect i thought some of the best work was by brit because she actually like came in and wore out jericho with the kendo stick and then soraya took a couple shots and she left because soraya is coming out to support jericho i guess oh i guess because cole's affiliate with baker that's yeah like, i guess that's it pretty much um cole gets up top gets a chair thrown in his face and then falls through a table that's out on the floor and then a chain match breaks out. Oh, what do I mean? Oh, there's a chain with they like, were handcuffed. handcuffs. It was like it. a really long chain handcuff thing. Like it was handcuffs with really long chains. Then there was it like, was like a chain match basically. It yeah. was yeah, a weak Panama sunrise at one point. Then we hit a boom, a whole bunch of hammer fists, and a boom with the chain on his knee maybe. Yeah, a whole bunch of hammer fists, and the ref stops the match, and Cole wins in 21 minutes. Your thoughts? I'll let yeah, you go this first. This is kind of boring. I like, and. Very underwhelming for what I expect this. from an unsanctioned match. Like, Cole had a better one with Orange Cassidy way back. Yeah. And, like, these are supposed to be, like, grudge matches and, like, right. the most brutal stuff. Like, it's off the record cut for that reason, right? Yes. And this just didn't feel like it lived up to that. And the finish was, like, those shots reminded me of Karrion Cross, And yeah. that's not a compliment. No, and you love Adam Cole. And I, yeah, I love Adam Cole. And this is just, like, eh. I agree. I, um... It's just kind of dull. I didn't like this. I was really bored through stretches when Jericho was in control and not really doing much. And then all the extra people in it was just another thing that kind of annoyed me. And I would rather see Cole in a regular match. And I don't know if we need to do gimmick matches because Jericho is slowing down or whatever. But like, I don't, I'm fine with Adam Cole in just regular matches. He's great. Mm -hmm. So nothing, yeah, nothing memorable for an unsanctioned match, right? Like there's nothing I'll remember no. from this. And I, I think you agree. I enjoyed Roderick Strong Jericho from yeah, TV I think that was way better. That more, was unique. Way right? more like, fun than this. Yeah, I mean, sure, it was a TV match, but it was more unique. So I was super underwhelmed by this one, I would mm -hmm. have to say. Agreed. Then we get FTR taking on Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett. I guess this that's will definitely the pick the show up. Tag Team Championships as well. Yeah, so... You get a low bridge early on by Wait, Jarrett. Wait, they, did they tell us a million times about how great a referee Mark Briscoe was, or is that just just just, just, just Jarrett? Uh, Remember just, Summer's line? Oh my god, yeah. That he was <laughs> doing such a great job. And he was doing like normal referee stuff, yeah. but it was incredible when he did it. So remember there was a low bridge early by Jarrett and Cash. I thought he like broke his face because the way he flipped and oh, landed yeah. on the floor looked bad, but he was okay. Um, and then Lethal, <laughs> my next note is Lethal and Jarrett in control for quite a while and it's not great. Um, Dax gets tagged in, things pick up for a little bit. We got a Doomsday powerbomb from FTR, which is pretty cool. Uh, Sanjay Dutt breaks up a pinfall and then Briscoe sends Dutt and Sutnam Singh to the back. Um, Dax ducks and there's a chair shot to Briscoe. Is that what that note means? My notes are brief here. Um... Excalibur called it a shatter machine. That was yeah, the most noteworthy twice. That. He called it a shatter machine. Um, guitar shot to Aubrey a ki from Karen Jarrett, I think. And oh, then, big heel. And then my other note, it's been so long, right? My note says, double lethal injection makes FTR look a bit silly. So obviously they were standing and waiting he for it. He ran past them and then handspring cutter. It looked kind of dumb, I remember. Yep. Yeah. Uh, stroke to Dax. Briscoe wakes up. Only, Dax had a stroke. Only a two count. Jarrett is mad. Slap. Um, Jarrett is mad and slaps Jarrett. I probably meant Briscoe. Another shatter machine. <laughs> he's slapping himself because he's mad they're not doing good. Another shatter machine, and it's over after Smash 19 minutes. Smash contraption. Smash contraption. What, what did you think about this? You seem to... I thought it was okay. Like, uh, my f first three words. This was okay. Like, it was But didn't fine, need to be this like, long. I'd probably be annoyed if it was on TV, let alone on Double or Nothing. Agreed. And I have been, I have been yeah. annoyed that it's been on Double or Nothing since they advertised it. And yeah, it did not need to be this long. And... In what universe should Jared be challenging for titles on right. pay-per-views? Like, twice. And then I think because he's... I've heard people saying he's doing it on purpose and this is the style he's going for. I assume I it's care. because he's it's older and slowing down. But, like, 
lots of interference, guitar shots, ref bumps, right? Like all this stuff because I don't think he can necessarily work. I don't the... care why he's doing it. It still sucks. I know. it's. I didn't love this either. I thought... And F we both called it. In what universe yeah. would they win? FTR looked good for stretches, but nowhere near as good. It looks stupid, dude. This is not FTR. how you start like a hot title reign for them. Which, we need like, to get Aussie open in there, and they feud with FTR for like six months. Yeah, and have this three was like, or four uh, matches. Like the, the FTR title reign came too late. At the same time, mm -hmm. I don't know what they could have done because giving the titles to acclaim for a while was the right choice as well. Like yeah. I think that was a good call. Yeah. But at the same time, like the ship sailed on FTR a little bit. Like obviously they're still really popular, and I think there's still a chance to revive this. Yeah, I think so too. Pun intended, but, but like I don't. It's not as high as they were, and I think you, they have some rebuilding to do then. And this is not. And how if you, do you that. can give them a rival, right? That's a big step towards heating them back up to yeah. where they should. If be. not Aussie Open right now, I don't know who you can throw at them. I agree. But like, I, I, I would not. I would. Like, I get. I would like Pack to come back, and I would like. I know Phoenix isn't the best, but like, I'd like heal Death Triangle, and you throw Lucha Bros at them. Just. And in the future, that. for me, you go Mox and Danielson as like a super tag team once they're done with the bigger stuff and you could cool. spice things up too but even, even claudia and yuda could work if yeah. that's since that's already been established as a tandem from time to time right that wouldn't be a horrible idea either no it wouldn't um all right so what do we have next i have to my notes died so i actually am going into aew like i just stopped taking notes not that they died oh okay um, i thought your computer died i was like what are you doing? no what so, are you doing then so i'm going in to sort of look at theirs um what is the next match? It is the House of... Oh, no. It no. is um, Wardlow and Christian. Oh, in, fantastic. In the ladder match. So uh, let's go to... I feel like something happened in this match. But didn't, didn't Christian die for a period of it? Like, he was just gone. Well, don't you remember? Um, That was where Wardlow jumped Warped from the, the second ladder. rope onto the ladder. And, and kind the of ladder fell on just, Christian. like, exploded, basically. It kind of fell on Christian, I think. Yeah. So it, this is from AEW, just sort of paraphrasing their stuff because they do a quick job, which is what I'm looking for. Wardlow set up two tables on the re arena floor, put Christian on them. He was about to jump off the turnbuckles. Uh, Christian ran for cover and then rammed a ladder into Wardlow's midsection. Wardlow pressed Christian, spun him, planted him on a ladder, and then started to climb the ladder. But Luchasaurus came down to the ring. He pushed Christian back into the ring, and Christian hit a kill switch, remember, off the ladder that looked kind of good? Oh, yeah, that was kind of cool. Wardlow goes for a senton. Christian moves out of the way, um, and that, that was onto a ladder, so Wardlow's taken out there a little bit. And then more ramming of the ladder into Wardlow. Arn Anderson comes down to try and motivate Wardlow, and would you like to talk about the spot with Arn Anderson and Luchasaurus? He's just like biting Luchasaurus's thumb, and it, it and then the thumb was bleeding, and then he just had so much. Like, he just had looked, like blood out of his mouth for the rest of the time. It was so weird. Yeah, like it, why? It just looked silly. Like why not a spine buster or something? Like it was. <laughs> So yeah, he. I don't care he, if Luchasaurus has to sell a spine buster. This is just dumb. He basically bites his thumb off for some reason. Um, Extract the thumb to put to block a choke slam. I guess was the point, right? But whatever. Just um, choke slam, Arn. I don't care. Wardlow then uh, hits Luchasaurus, puts him on the table, climbs up a ladder, and does a, a pretty nice looking senton through the table. I will say, a yeah. guy that big, and it, the landing. He kind of took the one yeah. table though, but like yes, that's okay. he did. Um, and then Cage climbs the ladder in the ring, but Arn shoves it over. Christian fell into Wardlow's arms. Wardlow power bombs Christian. Uh, then Wardlow climbed the ladder and pulled down the belt to retain his championship. Um, how did you feel about this one? I'll let you go first. Um, I thought it was perfectly fine. Like I didn't like it didn't, nothing blew me away. I thought the table spot was cool. I agree. The Arn stuff kind of bogged it down for me. It made it like wrestle crap kind of kind of, and like Christian right? was gone for a bit, and then like it was a perfectly it was like an expectable result, and that's not always a problem, but like just for a match I didn't really care about right to expect the result too. It's just like I don't like it. It was fine. I was like yeah, because there was I was mildly entertained by the like ladder breaking that was interesting, even though it wasn't supposed to happen, right? And then the senton looked really good, so there was a couple cool things in this overall like. Again, I don't think it needed to be 17 minutes, but I guess what do you do with a ladder match, right? So um, I think I liked it better than the tag match and better than the unsanctioned match. I not guess. saying that's not a super high bar. Not wild compliments. But um, yeah, so I don't know. It was, it was fine. Then you get, which is not what we expect from AEW pay per views, is no. kind of the point we're getting at here. Yeah. Then we got um, Tony Storm taking on Jamie Hayter, right, in uh, what turned out to be a very short match. Um, 
So Hater's attacked by Soraya and Ruby Soho as she makes her entrance, just to, I guess, make this quick match a little more believable. And they triple team Hater. The match begins, and Tony starts stomping on her. Britt Baker comes down to brawl with uh, Soraya. Ruby Soho then sprays Hater in the eyes, I guess, as that's happening. And the ref's distracted as well. Sheeta comes down with a kendo stick and fights. She and Ruby are kind of fighting around ringside. Jamie goes for the hater aid, and Tony immediately sort of grabs her arm because that's the injury she's uh, selling, and I guess it is legit as well. And then it's just kind of Storm Zero, pile driver out of nowhere, and it's over in, I don't know, maybe it was five, six minutes probably, right? So um, thoughts on this? I for, didn't love for it. For a pay-per-view? <laughs> like... I guess they were sort of, backed into a corner right because haters like, legit like, hurt yeah if that's the case then, but i also think otherwise i i would i would say the choice to give storm the belt is highly questionable and i think it's an right now a bit of an indictment of their division right because who, who else could you possibly give it to right. other than one of those three because you're not doing anything with anyone else and i guess now you're gonna starting to like Sheeta, I guess, is the next thing in the mix, right? Stylander is starting to be something, but she's also occupied with the other belt. Right. Yeah. So, like, they don't, they don't no one's gotten a lot of attention to be thrust into a title program, right. I don't think. Yeah. And the, this is not a pay per view match. And no. obviously, they were kind of backed on the thing. Right. But then, I don't know. I would just would have, like, done a replacement match. And again, like, more run ins and interference and ref distractions, right? There's right. a lot of that happening yeah. on this. So, I, I don't love it. But anyway. Too much going on. Yep. Yeah. We then get, uh, it wasn't announced, right? Because it was the open challenge or whatever right. it's called. Well, I guess it was and it wasn't. It kind of was, right? So we knew they were, anyways, it's House of Black defending the trio's titles against the acclaimed in um, what was a bit of a surprise there. So let's see what we've got. We had early Brody King Lariat that was just about took Max's head off. Um, Malachi tags in, but the Acclaim use combination offense on him, but he does avoid this scissor me timbers, and he gets a knee bar on Bowens. Buddy comes in, hits a pretty nice Meteora at one point, um, and then you had Bowens just getting hit by a thrust kick from Malachi Black, and then what, anything interesting here. We get the cannonball from Brody King in the corner, right, to Bowens, I think it was, and then... Um, Mr. Gun, Daddy Ass, finally gets <laughs> in, Gun. and he's sort of hitting everybody, and then we get basically he just kind of walks into the Black Mass, which I don't think has a name. And they called uh, he was calling it the end on, and so they win. Uh, he was either on this and Diamond where he called it the end. I miss Black Mass. That was a sweet name. It was, and yeah. So House of Black, no surprise, retained. Yeah. This was about fifteen minutes. I thought this was fine, but again, felt like TV. Like hundred percent. This could have been the replacement to like a usual open house thing and like this would have been fine on TV and I would be perfectly okay with this on TV like I'm all, I'm still okay with it on pay-per-view but I'm I'm a little more like eh, just because exactly it's on though or I nothing felt. and like I don't think we need this edition here because it literally was a last minute thing I don't think it was like completely necessary and this necessary. pay-per-view was long enough without right. that's kind of what I was thinking this right on, like right. don't really need more of that 100% agree totally fine did not need to be on the card could have been on tv and i would have been happy mm -hmm. uh then we move into the tbs championship match which is jade cargill defending one of two a, tbs right, championship so, matches spoiler, okay against taya valkyrie um so taya immediately goes for the road to valhalla but jade gets away then we, slam. then we get forearm exchange uh sliding lariat from taya Jade goes out to the floor to sort of regroup with Mark Sterling, and Taya jumped off the turnbuckles to take out Sterling. Then um, we get a sliding German suplex, which I thought was actually kind of cool. Uh, Layla grabs Taya's boot uh, long enough for Jade to take control, uh, and then she suplexes Taya out on the floor that looked pretty good too. Jade planted Taya with a spine buster, dumped Taya throat first over the barricade. Um, Taya comes back with a lariat. And then she did hit a blue thunder bomb to Jade for a near fall. Curb stomp for a near fall as well from Taya. Spear to Jade as well. Um, planted Jade with the road to Valhalla for a bit of a believable near fall right there. Hit her with her finisher. But then Jade just kicks out. And then she basically turns around and hits the same move to Taya, who had sustained much less in the recent part. And 
Well, she's so muscular. Retains. I guess there's a different. Yeah, that I don't love the finisher in general, like we said, because this doesn't look super impactful. But when you point it out like that, it just seems dumber. Yeah, it was uh, so a fairly quick match. I think it was like nine minutes is what I had. TV match. I thought solid, but nothing special, right? Another thing that what didn't feel pay per view. I totally agree with you. Um, and then that the finish was just kind of like she hits it and it's over sort of thing. Anyways, um, Sterling gets on the mic, brags about Jade facing anyone, anytime, and that there's nobody left and blah, 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 that kind of stuff. And we get the return right of Chris Statlander. This is where you were telling me I'm a wizard. Cause I said, that yeah, well, cause you've been, you said that for like a week or so, yeah, a good week or so. Gonna be back and, and then I was like, what are the chances that actually just randomly happens? Very good. So <laughs> she runs down. They basically have a match, which like, Mark Sterling looks stupid for allowing. I guess that's how, how. Why did the heels honor their? Well, wouldn't you just go? No, we're not doing this. I get that's also how Stark but, lost the FTW title. I guess right. Yeah. Last year, but a that's a made up title. B that was on TV. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Statlander wins. I don't even know what she hit for the finish. I, I think she even... hit her power driver thing. I forget what it's called. It's like the uh, the legs hook tombstone. Oh right, right, right. I don't remember what she calls it. So she wins and gets a nice little reaction, and it's nice to see her back, but. I don't like the decision. I think her returning here is cool, but why no. not build something off of this? If you yeah, think if this she is... was going to win the title here, I would have had a return. Or sooner. is this just them going? We're done with Jade. We got to pull the plug because you'd think if they're that's what I would. That's why I was picking Taya, in which so right. I think we both got that wrong. Then I don't and, actually. I'll check. And if they're happy with no, Jade, you took Jade. You win. If they're happy with Jade, wouldn't they like build this? Instead of being, it feels like they're maybe just they kind of like that realization that we've come switch. to, right? Right, yeah, I think maybe I, I, on a technicality, you still get that because technically do. she won the advertised match, so right. Um, and then what do you, I guess, like, sorry, just to kind of go off of that for a second, like, what do you do with Taya? I know she's lost twice to Jade, she hasn't looked great, and she hasn't looked great, so I'd. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's an interesting uh, predicament they are in right now. It's not even like she went for the main title and you're like, oh, she can drop down to the mid card title. So she is, challenged for the mid card title and lost twice. And even if you want to go back to Jade and Statlander, you've kind of done it backwards there too because now you have the heel chasing, whereas you could have just Statlander shows up, we enter a feud, and the baby face chases the champion. Exactly. I don't know what they were doing. Um, then we're gonna. I'm not even gonna go for because these last two matches were so crazy. I'm just gonna go over my thoughts on them. I think because uh, if if you remember any key things, you can talk about them. But so it's the AEW World Title match with Max MJF facing Sammy Guevara, Jungle Boy, and Darby Allen. This is the pillars match that we've been looking forward to, and we've enjoyed the build along the way. And I have to say. I absolutely love this match. This is one of my this is awesome front runners for match of the year. I preferred it to the main event slightly. I don't think I don't you know. did. I, th- I I think just watching you watch both, I would say you like the main event better. But I thought this was a fantastic four way match. match list. I'll I thought get ev- both for sure. I thought everybody looked great. I thought Sammy Guevara was kind of the standout in this for me. Um, you had all four men again incorporated instead of it feeling like two guys and then two guys and we rotate like a square dancing right. sort of thing. Um, a lot of cool spots, nonstop action. A lot of nice action. sequences in there. And this match did exactly what it was supposed to do. Like all, everybody comes out of this looking better. Fans got a classic match. This is one that was so good. I might even go back and watch it again at some point. Um, and it's further evidence, right? That what I really am hopeful about AEW is they have young talent who are awesome and that they're willing to put some attention on and elevate. Mm-hmm. So super bright future for them. I thought this match was fantastic. It delivered on expectations. Which and the was finish good. was cool. Like the finish, I, I really liked the finish. So you can explain it if you want It to. was so, I think Darby had Sammy already for a coffin drop or whatever. Yeah. Like it was Sammy. And MJF just like chucked the title on Sammy so that when Darby hit it, he landed right on the title. Right. And then he pinned him with the headlock so, takeover again. So good. I, I love that so much. Yeah, I was, was really like, good. no way he's doing that again, but. It was good. He, he did it again, which that's like a callback from like over a year. Or so that's yeah. That was that was awesome. I re- I really enjoyed the finish. Me too. It was well. Yeah, done. I thought this was awesome. There's action all over the place and incorporating them all in enough, right? Like I agree. Like not like the crappy formula that at least WWE has done a lot yes. and AEW maybe sometimes, but they usually do a good job of like AEW and NXT. Like the five way was a good example of like yep. incorporating everyone, right? Like. I mean, they also did the two-person thing, but whatever. That's because Cross is stupid. But this was this was really fun. It was really good. It it felt like a main event if it was. Like I, I was surprised it wasn't the main event. I'm not complaining. 
that it wasn't because the other match was totally deserving as well. Right. But I think this would be like, this is totally a worthy main event if there ever was one. I, I agree. And it's just, I think it would have been really hard for any match to follow Anarchy in the arena, yeah. right? I think is, Which I think is why I'm not And my God, did they go out of their way to say double main event like at every possible It was like turn. the WWE thing, but oh, it, it annoys madness. me less because... Like WWE advertised a triple main event and then put one of them as an opener. Yeah, you don't do that. I think they especially were when over, it was a title match. Like I think they were overcompensating a bit here. AEW did it a little bit bit much. Yeah, but at least they were in a succession. They did also both feel like main events. Yeah, I will. They did. I will, that, I'll give them props for that. No, Amazing that, match. That's totally appropriate. Uh, so that leaves us the main event, which was Anarchy in the Arena. I'm gonna quickly because I'd want to refresh myself on a few things that happened here. They um, had a band playing. They did that wild thing, and I don't remember who right. the band is. But then they also had him play the song for like half the match, call yep. back to last year, which I, I love that. And then the Bucks super kicked the lead singer, right? Um, so that's how they stopped it. So I thought right. that was a really nice uh, way to work that back into the match without feeling stupid. Yeah, like, I think I think that was really good. Uh, so there's like brawling right away to start with this. Let me see. We've got Kenny hit Moxie with a piece of the announce table at one point, but Moxie yeah, they had an announce table at ringside at busted, Double or Nothing, right. which was different. So he's busted wide open pretty on, pretty um, early on. You had Matt Jackson with the locomotion suplex down the ramp to Yuta, right? Um, we had Barb Wire get involved. Mock suplexes Omega onto Barb Wire. Um, we've got Yuta's whipping Hangman with a leather belt. You've got a fork, right, into Omega's forehead. You've got a Claudio big swinging Matt Jackson into a garbage can in, out like on the concourse. Um, and what else was interesting here? There was a pickup truck involved, right? Claudio yeah, he, had... Yeah, he hit Matt with a pile driver in the back of a pickup <laughs> truck, which is right. kind of interesting. That was interesting for sure. We had a dead eye on the apron to Mox. We had Claudio with a pop-up European uppercut to Omega. We had a whole... Just madness all over the place. Gotch-style pile, pile driver to Nick Jackson from Mox. Um, ex oh, right. I almost didn't do that with... Uh, Matt Hardy, or sorry, Matt Jackson. What did he hit that was crazy? Yeah, like he came back in after being out for a while because him and Claudio brawled to wherever, and then he came back in. Uh, I think Mox and Yuta had a submission on Nick, maybe. Yeah, and I think he that's just right. hit. He, Mox was an exploding super kick, you know, just everything. The sound was really cool. So I, almost, I enjoy it so much. I almost put it in my news. They had to like do a thing to the fire or whatever to get that approved like basically because it's mean? a risk of anytime you do anything that might be it has to be huh. i can't remember the proper term uh, i i love that i can't whenever i see the i love the sound yeah. of it it look it looks cool it sounds cool like i really enjoyed it was that a spectacle spot. for that sure that was a nice little spot uh we got thumbtacks right and uh, and they put matt jackson they took it up, they took off the shoe right. that he, he used to explode he ate mox's face and then nick took a stunner yeah. basically on the tax um we had a V trigger yeah. coming in there, and then I'll just hack feed is horrible. Callus gives a screwdriver to Wheeler Yuta, and he gets Paige with it. Takeshja jumps into the ring, hits Omega. Yeah, as Omega was about to take out Callus, and someone need Kenny, and oh my God, it's Takeshita. Right, and so Yuta then gets Omega with the seatbelt and pins him. Right, that's crazy. Yuta pinning Kenny Omega, and yes, the big reveal was that Takeshita is heel with Callus. Not sure if he's. Uh, in in uh, Blackpool or just sort of adjacent and it was, helping them? It was more of an against Omega thing. It could, uh, yeah, right. Like exactly. it's either he's in Blackpool or he's just against Omega. Right. So I mean, this match was. I crazy. thought this was great. It yeah, was, it was excellent. I it still was really prefer fun. the original one, but this was. I don't know this one. This got five like stars. The, what I do you believe. mean? What do you mean when you say the original one? The one with um, like where Ka where the Hangman was drinking at the bar and that like... Stadium Stampede. Oh, sorry, that's right. That's different. Oh my god. I I would almost agree with you if that if that's the one you're thinking. Sorry, I thought you meant the original Anarchy in the no. Ring, which was last year, which was no no Blackpool and Jazz. No no, this one. Okay. Th this one probably was better. Okay. No, I I that that's a fair. I might like. I might. I don't know. It depends. Like the stadium, the first stadium champion was, was pretty so good. Fun. That was fun. There was, I this one wasn't again. fun. This was just a like. A, <laughs> it was just nuts. Not right. not in a bad way. It was no just no, like, not in a bad way at all. It was just nuts. It was fantastic. The, I thought it it was <laughs> it wasn't fun, but it was also fun. It was it was really fun to watch. Um, it was. It was just like craziness all over the place. Like it, it got bloody as you'd expect. And um, there was a little bit of actual wrestling, which was nice too, right? And, and I like the story in in here. Like the story here kind of necessitated the carnage too. So it's not like just like it was. It's not just like mindless, all this crap for nothing. It kind of 
works because this is a heated thing. Um, I like the callback to last year with the wild thing. I think that was a creative way to use it this time. Yeah. I like the way they did that. Instead of it just like playing again, I think they they did like it, it was an interesting choice. Uh, exploding super kick was cool. The thumbtack spot, like I, I hated that because just like your feet, your bare foot stepping on thumbtacks, that's just horrible. Yeah, but was. like, uh, this is fun all over the place. I really enjoyed this. It was. I feel uh, like they gave Yuta a lot in this. Yuta like got getting the win. I think that's. I think I like that too. That's that's great for yeah. him because the uh, other the, two don't need it. Yeah, the or t- other three. Sorry, the don't need it. Uh, turn yep. is interesting too. Like I'm actually, I wasn't sure he'd be okay as a heel, but even just his facial expression or lack thereof i guess while callus is talking i kind of like it already. i liked when he um revealed himself he just kind of got like that stone face expression like, yeah i like it like he's just like i don't know how to read that but i, I like it me too like i i was gonna like try to like say how in- i'd interpret that but i don't even know like i just i kind of liked it and i just i liked everything here i thought it was like it it saves the show from the depths the, a bit. The last two matches saved this show. I right. was not happy through that middle stretch. No, I think this like, these two matches really make the show. And that was in my overall wrap up is like this is the first time that I sat there going, like, I paid fifty dollars for this, right? There's it's never You just thought, like, Yeah, I paid fifty dollars. Money for that. well spent. And this was like I got like a bunch of dynamite worthy matches and then a couple like blow away matches, which is cool. Mm-hmm. But and the battle royal was fun, and the ladder match had its moments, but like Jericho Cole was a miss. That for was me. a disappointment. If the anything. women's match was nothing. The tag match was underwhelming, right? So not up to their high standards no. at all. I gave it a C plus and called it disappointing, right? And you could even talk me into a C probably if you want to. But those last two matches are so good that I gave I, I moved it up to a C plus. I I'll go know. C plus. I'm I'm I was almost gonna say B just because I really liked the last two matches, but I think. The rest of the show just wasn't. Because those are on two par. match of the year, like in the running, possibly. Who knows? We'll I see put them on my the list. Goes. But yeah, they make the list, right? So yeah, um, a disappointing show overall, but a couple of matches people should definitely go out and mm-hmm. see. All right, I think that wraps that up. Brings us to actually talking about AEW Dynamite now, right? So let's do that. Let's take a look at this past week's episode right about now. So before we talk Dynamite, we just found out that I won the predictions contest for Battleground by two. No, for Double or Nothing. Or sorry, Double or Nothing. I clean sweep you Battleground. Won, right. The show you don't watch. And then, <laughs> well, I guess <laughs> you got everything right. I guess the tiebreaker is the Saudi. So I'll, actually, I'll, I just kind of want to look quick. So okay. I think we... I don't even know n- some of the results. Neither of us picked Trish. Okay. So that's it. We both picked Gunther. I both picked Ripley. Um, We both picked Belair, so that's wrong. <laughs> Um, you picked Lesnar, so you get that one. To Ching. Um, Ko and Sammy both picked that, and Rollins both picked that, so you win that one. By hey, one. champion of the weekend, two for three. The only one you knew is the one you don't watch, <laughs> and the one I didn't get wrong, right, at all. Oh, I guess you don't watch WWE main roster stuff either. I don't but, really do that. But anyways, okay, okay, let's get into Dynamite. Go. All right. Uh, we open with uh. Well, I guess we just talked about them, so we're doing it again. We got Blackpool. Combat Club versus Lucha Bros and Bandito. To nitpick with a Dan little on commentary. Again, I think I said it last pay per view too. Like to go through the match they went through, I would I would be okay if they had like a week off to but this is like they're a few days later in another Well, I guess they match. just want they just like to do what they do. That is true. I don't I'm curious, like well it's kind of weird. I feel like Danson has not wrestled since he's come back. He it was Anarchy in the Arena and that's it. Yeah, I don't don't think there's anything wrong with him, but like it does beg the question. Everything is right with him. How dare you? I don't know. It's interesting to say the least. Um, my first question. I like dance and wrestle. What is Bandito wearing? Looked like he was a woman wrestling in Saudi Arabia. Not gonna. It lie. was a full on like some weird bodysuit thing. I I hated it. He took the shirt off within the match, so then yeah, it looked. I, fine, but I still but uh, yeah. It was a lot. I, I hated it. <laughs> you did. Um, it was, it was horrible. Yeah. So Black Bull versus Lucha Bros and Bandito, and like Excalibur said in the Battle Royal, all Lucha doors are related, that's, right? <laughs> well, was that something like was that? Was it Excalibur? I think that's what it was, or it, or was it Taz? I think it was Taz. I think it was Taz. Okay, same difference. And I was like, is that mild to medium racism there? I don't know. Anyway, so Lucha Bros that, times three here. What that was, and Danielson was on commentary, yeah. and I enjoyed him. Yeah, I didn't, I hope I'm on the wrestle though. I know, but he's such a it's good weird. like talk explaining the technical stuff and like, anyways, yeah. carry on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he he's he's great. 
Um, so Claudia and Phoenix were brawling in the crowd. Mox and Pentra were brawling on ringside. Bandito and Yuta started the match off in the ring. Um, Bandito held Yuta for a, a minute long, stalling Zuplex. Crazy. For, One and arm. And got a two count off of that. Yeah. Well, counting um, with the other. He hand. like he was like kind of pumping up the crowd. Yeah. But then he would, like obviously he like kind of used his arm from time to time to keep Yuta it's up. Madness. But like generally speaking, it's a one arm stalling suplex for a minute. Yep. Like a, a full minute. I'm sure Yuta's not a big guy, but I don't care. That's mm-hmm. still a, like a borderline 200 pound man. Yeah, that, that was holding. pretty nuts. Yep. Uh, Yuta was distracted. The ref Mox and Claudio hit Bandito with a spike power driver on the outside. Crowd loving Bandito. Mm-hmm. Uh, Penta goes on a bit of a flurry until Claudio takes him out with a lariat. Uh, Bandito and Yuta had a lengthy forearm exchange. There's a pop-up card from Bandito. Uh, finish came when Yuta hit a running knee to Bandito and then beat him down with hammer and anvil elbows. We're putting with the seatbelt. Another win for Wheeler Yuta. Crazy. I feel like, again, they are really trying to elevate him um, to the level, maybe I'm not, to the level of the other guys in the group's impossible, probably, but like from where he is. So yeah, I thought uh, <laughs> maybe to Claudio's level, just to be mean. I thought this was a really good trios match to start the show. I thought Bandito was a standout here, and the crowd loved him. And yeah, they seem determined to further establish Wheeler Yuta here, which is cool because that's what veterans, stars that you want, do. That's the kind of stuff they do. And this is the type of action I prefer to start a show. Right, something exciting, get the energy up always up for a trios match to open mm-hmm. yeah i thought it was a solid opener too i was definitely more entertained by uh fletcher's showcase last week but it was still an ideal kind of opener um another kind of wild bcc brawl i thought it was interesting yuda was in it for most of the match and then between this and getting the pin in anarchy in the arena he's getting some more focus which is pretty cool mm-hmm. um the minute long song suplex is, suplex is pretty sweet just would have been better if bandito wasn't wearing crappy ring gear. <laughs> um, quality win for Blackwell is expecting keeps their momentum yep. going. Um, then we get a quick check on the Elite. Um, so Marvez is interviewing the Elite minus Omega with Matt Jackson being checked on a table. Um, Matt says a long time ago we told Hangman he brings out the good in them. At double nothing, it proved that Blackpool brings out the worse in them. He mentions the explosive super kick, and he never thought he'd do something like that. Um, I mean, Me he either. did a thumbtack super kick. He so. did. Nothing's off limits when it comes to super kicks. Uh, Nick repeats what Hangman said about them being the heart and soul and they won't be kept down. Hangman says they're still standing and breathing. Blackpool prides themselves on the numbers game. But then Dark Order interrupts and Uno asks how he's been doing. But then Silver's like, no, 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 we'll, we'll leave. He's with these, his new best friends now. And they see themselves out. Uh, before Hangman can talk to them, Marvez asks about Omega being out of country and supposedly in Canada. Hangman says Kenny is pissed off and he's hurt. And he's out of the country, but not in Canada. Yeah. What so there's some significance to that? There has I don't know. to be. Um, I thought the segment was pretty good. Words from Lee were solid, but all, um, and in, in all, but I thought this was good because there's a lot of interest coming out of this. I like them keeping the Hangman Dark Order thing alive, like that they didn't ignore that, um, and they can come back to that later. Like that's still like they didn't just ignore that yeah. he was friends with them for so yeah. long and they literally fought the elite. Together. And I like Dark Order being a little annoyed by all of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I notice you're cool to hang out with them, but you don't hang out with us right. anymore, kind of thing. Um, then I'm curious what's up with Omega. Like you were kind of saying, like Hangman said he's gone, but not in Canada. Like the way that was said to me surely implies he's somewhere else. But right. I'm it was curious like, where that would be. That's anything of note. It's like, like the, what's the angle? The pregnant pause before it, not in Canada. Like he's out of the country. But not in Canada. Like right. clearly, there's something like, there. Forbidden Storm, Forbidden Store, Forbidden Door is oh, in Canada. I just figured out what, what? it is. What? He's in Japan getting Kota Ibushi. Oh. And I'm not even joking, right? Like, is that? Is yeah. Because there's all this talk. I of, okay, that's funny because I thought of Japan, but I didn't think it was because that. I just thought Japan because like bringing back Ibushi, or maybe. something. Like, that's it. That you that's def- that has to be it. I well, think. what else is that going to be? Like literally, the only thing I could think of do, was Japan, just without blood, that. And then blood and guts with him or something. They do that one ever, the so, like, They'll do that. Yeah, exactly. That's what that is. I just cracked the code. That has boys. to be what that is. There's no way that's not what that is. I think you're right. I think I'm right. You're right that I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. I can't. It just hit me as you're because I'm like, where would he go? Not so clearly like him traveling somewhere is important, but it's not Canada. And I was yeah, and I was he trying has to huge uh, ties to Japan. Yeah, that's that's the only reason I thought of Japan. I didn't even think of Ibushi. And we've been talking about Ibushi. So that, I don't know why I didn't think of that because I've literally been thinking about Ibushi before, and I don't. I don't know why I didn't even that didn't even cross I think my mind. That's where we're that going. That kind of has to be that what that is because I don't know what else. Because otherwise, then what's the point of mentioning that? Like, and they lost to Blackpool, so they need reinforcements, right? Mm-hmm. So it makes sense. That does make sense. You heard it here first, maybe. <laughs> 
maybe. I think I've seen that before, but I mean, I actually I saw that before before this was the development. Yes. So I I did hear first for this, I guess. A little more. It's where that story's different. going. That kind of has to be what that is. I feel like I don't know where else he would go. No, I don't go to Mexico or something. Like, I guess, but I don't think so. I don't think so. It's it's a bushy. That action. That's a good way to do that. I think so. And because they're they're besties. Exactly. Makes sense. And he took the pinfall too, so it all works. It does work. That is interesting. And even if like Takeshita isn't officially Blackpool, he's still affiliated with. He's them, still against Omega, so he can have a guy that's not officially elite, or if they want, and that's affiliated with them, sort of thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what do you think about the rest of the segment? Just like elite in general. Um, I, I, I didn't think they were saying anything groundbreaking, but I did like the. The dark order part of it mm-hmm. just cause yeah. the curi- the stuff of like yeah like we haven't just forgotten that whole thing right they're still aware of it but yeah i thought the rest was kind of mm-hmm. generic um next shivani talks in the ring with black bull my black bull, bullet club gold um bcg so, and bcc it's a lot <laughs> the gang gang bang <laughs> top shelf gunslingers yeah like I want, how many news is this guy gonna have i'm not complaining i just think i think it's funny but it's just I I I, w- I wouldn't mind if he just comes with a million different. I will buy a shirt that says "Bang Bang Gang." Okay, mm-hmm. I I will legitimately. I, cause I think that's legitimately funny. It is. I'll do. I'll do that. Um, so White says he thinks they can all agree. Double nothing was an amazing night. And he bets rookie Starks is on top after he threw them out of the Battle Royal. But he wants to remind everyone, especially Starks, that he is st- also not the international champ, and he lost the Battle Royal just like he lost to Jay White by disqualification. Yes. Um. Juice says that brings them to FDR, which I don't remember when FTR saved them. I ju- I saw it like after the fact, and I was like, uh, when was that? I don't know. I don't remember when this Me was. Me either. Um, but anyways, he, they saved Starks from something, I guess. Um, they want to know why they saved Ricky, and he, he says it makes no sense, and there's no way they are friends with Starks because he has no friends. Um, and White says they also know FTR are Southern boys, so they're a little slow. But they didn't actually think they were dumb enough to get into the Bang Bang Gang's business. See, there it is. There it is. Uh, and then FTR's music hits, and they come to the ring. Juice says they must be here to apologize, and White agrees, and but he thinks they're here to join Bullet Club Gold. Obviously. As you do. Uh, White says all they had to do is ask, and to make sure they do it politely. Um, Juice takes a cheap shot to Dax with, I think it was like a fistful of quarters or something, or it, a fistful of It was. He, you could see him... He gets into his pocket, and yeah, it's like um, it's like Sonic dump- dumping all of his rings when he hits them; they just <laughs> fly all over the ring. Yeah, and then uh, him and White gang up on Cash. Dax gets planted with the juices loose. Then Cash takes a Blade Runner. Uh, Starks runs down with the chair to chase off the heels. And Stark says he's sick of them every week, and he he suggests they leave everyone else behind. And he and White settle things next week. Nice. It's always weird when the heel faction is outnumbered. Yes. Like. I feel like they'll change it, but just to me, that's always weird. And I was a bit surprised by like how quickly and easily they beat down FTR. Although it looked it looked good, and I thought chain punch. I think these. I think they do a good job as heels because they they work together because they kind of have their own style, right? Like White is relatively calm and smooth, and then Juice is like just a wild man, and I think it kind of it kind of works for them. And if I would love if they're in a program with FTR, but I think they need to be established a little bit like build yeah. a resume but i That's would love the, that my match. only complaint here is that they're right. not really a real team like they are not like jared and lethal were but one of them's not decades more experienced than old so correct but to be in White. the orbit of the champs already seems a this bit is kind quick. of the rankings issue but, that we were talking about yeah but like, i like the beat down I, I i like this yeah the the, the change punch was kind of cool um it was fine i'm just confused because i remember nothing about fdr being involved with this at all like that just we missed something yep um i don't know if it was rampage like i feel like it has to be rampage like, or the internet i guess i but don't probably rampage well, not really anymore there's no dark true they don't have internet anymore true um i don't hate blackpool cool it's the goddamn bc like it is bullet club gold having a feud with ftr uh, it does seem a little weird, like you're saying, and st- the Starks business ha- kind of has to wrap up first, but I don't hate it, because I enjoy White and Juice as a duo, so... Me too. As long as they can establish themselves a bit, like you said, I'm okay with it, because I really enjoy them together. And like we've been saying, we want a tag team established to be, like, a rival. They could be in they there if they... could be, yeah. If I don't they know. can beat some people. Mm-hmm. 
Um, next, we get a random triple threat, which is Swerve Strickland versus Big Bill Large William. Wow, you Trent just Beretta. was this subconscious or conscious? Where uh, you sk- conscious. skipped over TK announcing Punk is back? Oh, I didn't even note it. That was where it was. I thought you were talking about me saying Big Bill. No. Um, yeah, so TK announced it and you were not happy. And I, honestly, I felt like it was a bit of a mixed reaction. I think overall it ended up being positive, but I thought the initial reaction was mixed, which I don't know. We're not thrilled, but whatever. As long as it doesn't bother me. And then, yes, we get this triple threat. Sorry, go ahead. Might be. It's okay. Actually, I don't care. I feel you subconsciously like just blocked it out. Didn't yeah. Want, didn't want it. it didn't <laughs> I did happen. mention it in my news because I think True. I, I was pretty sure I forgot about it. No, you. Yeah, you. That maybe they, you got it there. Instead. Um. So this stems from battle royal shenanigans, basically. Right. Which I'm glad that they pulled that thread a little bit as well. Yeah. Um. Morris, he got a bit of a flurry about as much as a big man can. Uh. Moon to the outside from Trent to Morrissey. Trent and Swerve team up to hit uh, Morrissey with a superplex. Swerve misses a swerve stomp. Uh, Trent hits a running shotgun knee, then a pile driver for two. Morrissey broke the pin. Uh, finish came when Morrissey chokeslams Trent from the apron back in the ring. Then Swerve hits Morrissey with a swerve stomp on the apron, then rolls Trent into a crucifix pin to steal the win. I actually quite like this match, and I think it's another really smart use of Big Bill because, and like you said, they're incorporating things that happen in the Battle Royal because. He eliminated Trent, right? And then Swerve eliminated Big Bill by sort of turning on or like double crossing him. So I thought Big Bill looked good. And I think he looked strong because you had a heel and a face having to work together against him, right? So that's like a baby face going, I'll even work with a heel because this guy's so dominant. So Swerve picking up the win is obviously the right move. I think he's going to challenge Cassidy. And I think that match will be awesome. Um, but I mm-hmm. I liked this more than I thought I was going yeah, to, I and it accomplished say, what I needed it to. I was going to say uh, Swerve should get a touch, but he's uh, facing Cassidy next week, actually, R- so right. that'll be cool. Um, I thought it was a pretty solid team match. I just don't feel like it needed to be here. Like, sure, it comes from the Battle Royale stuff, but it just felt really random to me. I don't know why. I think it was just get Swerve a win, right? I, I, yeah, Basically. that's what I'm saying. I'm all for giving Swerve more wins on TV, but I would rather some singles match... Uh, built the week before or like on Rampage makes sense this felt like it was lacking anything meaningful and I thought Morrissey looked solid like kind of like he in did. the tag match because yeah. he can kind of be somewhat limited here and Swerve and Trent were fine but nothing super memorable here he's totally fine as, as a for what he is right and there's a there's a there's a place for a huge monster like him in any company so I didn't mind it mm-hmm. yeah uh, next we get a little promo from Statlander uh, I was just I think I started talking about being cleared like I think it was after the win I uh, look. I thought it was before, but I think it was after. Um, and uh, then talking about winning titles, this is a long time coming. And she said that moment just showed her what this means to her, and vice versa. And she's gonna prove this is her time. Yeah, I, it's nitpicking a little again, but should a baby face be so proud to win the title the way she won it? I guess. Well, they they put an open challenge, so I know that's no fault of hers. Yeah, I thought she sounded good here. Her emotion obviously seemed pretty real. Yeah, probably is. I'm just like kind of wondering what her gimmick is now. And they, I I know they've always had big plans for her. I think, and I guess this is the follow through on that, and we'll see. But yes, I would love to learn something about her. Right? Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not. Which confident. we didn't get much this week. I'll not. I'm not confident they'll give her the time to do that. But no. I'm hope because we do need to know. Like, what are you about? Like, aside from... She's been not alien for a while. She's back from injury baby face. That's basically it right now. And we need something more than Agreed. that. Agreed. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, next, we get an acclaim interview on the stage with Rene. Uh, Guns is double nothing. Didn't go their way. And the, anyone can lose on any day, so it's okay. But he's disappointed in letting him down. Uh, basically, the acclaim reassure, them, reassure him. And so Caster says together they're the acclaim. Bowen says their goal remains the same. They were screwed at a goal months ago. And they want some gold back, but after years of gone giving his all to this business, they deserve to hold he deserves to hold gold one more time. So I guess no tag titles, more trios titles. Everyone loves the acclaim, blah blah blah. Like this is fine. It felt really meaningless. This like moved nothing forward. <laughs> and there's I guess they're still on the trios titles, but as long as they don't win the titles, I don't care. You are my son, my only note. This was meaningless. They said things and I guess it was okay, question mark. I agree. Like there I was like kinda okay. Like you were on TV and said stuff, but I don't know what you accomplished. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're not quite as entertaining as they once were, but mm-hmm. they could be reheated. I mean, I they guess. it's not that they're not entertaining. It's just this was like, there was no point to this. It's no. just like, we still want the trio's titles. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah, exactly. sure. 
Billy Gunn. Even though we just lost. Billy Gunn deserves a title. Nah. Yeah. Nah. No. He's he's like, nah. No. He he can't do stuff on his own. He couldn't do stuff on his own. So I mean, he has given a lot to the business over the years, but I still remember that he had a failed singles run. He did. Mm-hmm. He's not the one. He is not the one. <laughs> Reference. Uh, next we hear from Don Kyle and Takeshita, which is probably I was most interested in this. But when's the last time you saw someone get this much heat? Oh, it was nuts. <laughs> they hate it reminds me of that one segment with Kevin Owens and Elias, and yep. they just got booed the whole time. Yep. This was they were booing the entire time. I literally like uh, crit to TJR for this because I I I just wanted to watch this, yep. so I borrowed his stuff like this. It was nuclear heat. And it I was think I think bananas. a less professional or talented guy in this role than Callus might have even been thrown off a bit because they no, did Callis not want him to speak perfect. even, right? Yeah, yeah. He was trying to, like, get it out, and he, it was not working. Yeah. Like, it was... They were booing... Like, it was a steady boo throughout yeah. the whole... They, like, they did not was, let up. It was nuts. Um, Callus says he hopes those boos are for Kenny Omega, which that was a great way to just, like, yeah. play the crowd he's a bit. Slick, They're, like, man. stroke the heat or whatever. Um, He said he's the victim here, and Callus has done everything for Omega. He says his title wins were because of him. Um, the crowd just keeps going. Uh, he uh, blamed Omega for the stitches he received for the scar on his head. He seen, He said he claimed that he maybe lost a nephew like Omega, but he gained a son like Takeshita. Nice. Which I find really amusing because he always called Omega a son, yeah. though. Like, he's Not just anymore. Like, he's been demoted. <laughs> he's been demoted to a nephew. Um, he gained, and Takeshita's Asian, so. That's right. And Kals is like white bread yep. as it comes. Uh, Kals said Takeshita is the best athlete he's ever seen. Uh, he said he's better, better than all of Japanese legends and say he's better than Okada. And he said he's better than Kenny Omega, too. Uh, Takeshita said some stuff in Japanese that I don't know. And then he said that they will destroy the elite and destroy Kenny Omega. And Cal said his new family is going to cut the elite out of all of the wrestling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Callus is incredible on the mic. And I kind of am liking this pairing with Takeshita. And I wasn't sure I was going to. I yeah, am. I was skeptical of this because I'm used to Takeshi's the fiery baby face. And I do believe him as a heel already. And that arrogant, just stoic look he has is working for me. And just like the crowd added to this, right? Like just the hatred they had for this man and the relentless. And the best part is that it'll rub off on Takeshi too. Like he's yes. already a natural heel just by association. Yeah, I think it could be a really smart pairing. And I really like this segment. I, Callus just being full heel and using his heel logic to explain everything is like he's the victim here is is good. He's mm-hmm. good. Yeah, I love that just for the fact that the crowd maintained the heaviest booze I've ever seen. I mean, heavy like the whole time. It was amusing and also a little impressive. Like that was just like it was nuts. Like he was garnering like nuclear levels of heat here. Like you got to respect that. Yeah, it was nuts. He may be an all time like manager or whatever just for like stuff like this like he's like he's, he's gotta great. be one of the best it's why it's a great he's partnership for got Takeshita. that heel heat locked down yeah he's so hated the point where Takeshi speaking garners more heat than most of the heels on the roster purely by association like Takeshi's Correct. already like on like Takeshi's in terms of heel wrestlers like he's already like somewhat under mjf just because he's with callus yeah like n- just because callus um definitely a lot to look forward to with this duo i think um i would like for Takeshi to be with black bull just because like i think that would kind of be a cool fit but um if this is a preview of things to come, going so Callus ain't so bad either. Give Takeshi a title. Like he could be he would be a sick TNT champion, I think. I agree. Um and better than Wardlow. Um let the Takeshi push commence. Like it finally feels like this is materializing because it's been rumored for a long time that Takeshi push. So I think and I think this partnership will, will work for like this is already off to a great I think start. So. so far so good. Um so I'm super interested to see where this goes. It was pretty nice. Um then we speak of, speak of the devil. We got Wardlow and Arn Anderson. Um, they were talking about the ladder match, and he said, uh, Wardlow said, if Luchasaurus wants to be next in line, he'd be happy to finish the job. Um, and this is fine. I don't really care. My only takeaway is like maybe a Luchasaurus match. That's cool. Yeah, it's not a super appealing match to me, but that, like uh, in my notes, I said I can't think of anyone in Wardlow that I'd be like super excited to see. So sure, I guess mm-hmm. I just. I'm kind of out on Wardlow, I guess. I, I'm sure people I, that listen I w- can tell. I wouldn't even say kind of. Right. Kind of's uh, sugarcoating it. I just want to, him to move on and that title to go. And, and the title get. feels like it's been disarray for a while. I, I so. miss King of Television. That was 
That was Absolutely. between Darby Allen and King of Television. That was a golden stretch, little. That's bit. one of the things that I'm revived the belt a bit for me. Disappointed with Ring of Honor because it's taken Joe away from us, and I was really enjoying Samoa mm-hmm. Joe. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Samoa Joe. I I keep seeing like the clips of that one promo where he was going Loved off it. on oh, like yeah. Jeff Hardy and yep. all them. Like that's I missed that. Me too. Like that was so good. I don't know. It's like the TNT title needs a shot at the ass. Like it, it needs something. The international title is like literally what the TNT title should be. Right. And I like I don't see why they both can't be better in something like that. Mm-hmm. Like the international title I think is going really well. I think the TNT title could be like that too. I don't really care if you got two workhorse titles. That just Me makes either. both titles great. Oh no. Even if you <laughs> I, they might go one on the other show then I guess maybe but I guess but whatever. Uh, I would put the TNT title there cuz I care about it less and it's literally TNT. Correct. The show's on TNT. That's right. So it does. Uh, next we get Orange Cassidy and Darby Allen house show versus Gates of Agony. Yep. They oh, they called him Khan, and then I was like, "Where's the bishop?" And then the commentary called him Bishop Khan. I was like, "Oh, there you He's go." He's an actual prince. I don't even remember. I was waiting for them to say that because they always do. Do they? Yeah. He's yeah. a prince of something. Actually. Yes, yeah, like an actual prince. He's an actual prince. He is an actual prince. No way. But anyways. That's bananas. Carry on. Wayward son. Um, so Con and Leona, I always thought it was Toa Lenoa, but it's Leona, so my mistake. It is. I know I always want to say Lenoa. I probably will, to be honest. I, I'm trying to get used to that. I have to change the mindset a bit. Um, so yeah, Con and Leona, Leona, uh, they attack the faces at the end of Cassie's entrance. Uh, Leona blocks Darby's springboard coffin drop on Con by pouncing him. That was pretty cool. Uh, Con hit Darby with a backbreaker on the turnbuckles, and Leona hit a senton on the apron. That was also cool. Hot take flirt from Cassidy, Tilt World DT to Khan. Uh, Leona hit Cassidy with a Samoan drop. And later on, we got the finish. Darby hit Khan with a, with a coffin drop for the win. And then Swerve and Brian Cage were going to uh, make their way to the ring like they're going to attack Darby. But then Sting returned. Yeah. Mid, mid-card heels beware. Exactly. God, remember when Team Taz just got chomped every week because they would run away from Sting? That was the stupidest thing ever. Yeah. I swear to God. That or when Sting no sold a table spot. <laughs> yes. I'll never forget that. Um, I really like this match. And th- I thought there were a lot of cool moments. I thought Gates of Agony, they might not be ring generals, but they are a believable monster team. And I they thought this did them like wonders. A ton. Yeah. I agree. This and is they probably look- like the most I've like them and i i'm not i'm not like the biggest fan of them still but like this is probably like the most i've i thought liked leona looked like a match. beast in this but again you're throwing around darby allen and orange cassidy like you couldn't ask for better opponents to look like monsters against um the crowd thought this was a lot of fun and so did i like there this was two big guys killing your favorites and then your favorites are going to be resilient and come back and win and i agree I put in my notes that I think this puts Gates of Agony on the map a little bit for people who may not, because I thought they looked good. They're not getting too much spotlight being ROH six-man tag team. Especially Leona, I thought, looked awesome. So there is a place for a monster tag team in the division, right? So I... If they get better, chuck them at FTR. I thought I this care. was a solid uh, audition for them. I yeah, liked it a if lot. If they can prove themselves to like carry a decent match, like obviously this made them look good, but they can like at some point prove themselves to carry a decent yep. match. I wouldn't hate them being t- challengers. And at least they've been established like they are a tag team. That's the right. same cannot really be said for Lethal and Jared. I mean, actually, they kind of got established, but still, it doesn't, and it'll never feel like a real team no. to me. No, these guys came in. Well, they were a six man tag before, but no, they're a legit team, yeah. Mm-hmm. Forgot who Khan was with before, but wasn't it Moses? It was, uh, was his yeah. Name? Mm-hmm. Um, he and was in the Shane Taylor. Yes, yeah, that's right. That's what it was. And then, because Le- then Leona he, was later. Leona was Embassy. Yep. And then. That's yeah, that's the current stick. Yep. Um yeah, this sure what this this sure was a much better random TV match. Yeah. So I enjoyed this much more than the triple threat, which I don't think was bad. I just think this was better like as a random one just because it was a lot more enjoyable. And Cassie and Darby don't really need a win here, but it was solid TV fun and a pretty solid showcase for the Gates of Agony. Like I thought so. Facing Darby does one for people, I guess, and the same thing can be said for Cassie now. They're the, similar. I mean, sure, yep. Cassie's got you. And actually, if you really think about it, this also works on the level like that Cassie's got issues with swerves now. Or Correct. swerve now because the Mogul Embassy. That's so, right. like, it kind of works on that level too. It does. It like, was good. The only, if you think, if you really want to, like, 
kind of think about it. Then the only random part is Darby being in here. That's right. And even at that, that point, you can argue... Because they've been tagging, so... Yeah, and then you can argue Cassie needed a partner. So, like, I don't know. It's yeah. not the most random thing now that I think about it, because if Cassie's, like, kind of having a, a mini, mini feud with Swerve, right. then this makes sense on a, a somewhat level. I agree. So, that's, that's cool. This was solid. It was, it was good. Next, we hear from Hook. We don't. Um, no. Before he says anything, LFI come out. Um, they, it's, Jose complains that they're not on television a lot, um, and he says Roosh isn't on TV right now because they don't because he's too dangerous. He says they don't get a lot of opportunities. So they're gonna take this one. Drillistico and Preston Fancy. You thought it was Roosh for a second. I did. Uh, they took, I forgot they about Drillistico. They beat a hook. Jungle Boy ran down with the steel chair, attacked them. Um, Jose went in the ring, hook, suplex Jose. They fist bumped. End. Yeah. I... So Jungle Boy's going from co-main eventing to a program with LFI. I, Back to Jungle Hook. Right. And I thought, like, because you were saying he could turn heel here. And then I, that's what I was waiting for. Right. And it kind of looked like, oh, he's going to Darby. I was like, oh, he's going to do back. it. He's going to do yeah, it. No. no. So maybe they're restocking the tag division and this is where they're going? I don't really want Jungle Boy and Hook as a tag team, though. That doesn't I don't really either. It's got legs for title matches, at yeah. least. Like. So I thought this was a very quick move down the card for Jungle Boy, bottom line, but whatever, I guess. I don't know. You could chuck Alpha in a tag uh, I, I agree. if you really want to. I would personally pick Roosh and his brother. Me too. A.K.A. Drillistico. I would but too. But I, I'm just not Vance, no offense. Yeah. I, I would just stick, keep Vance in Dark Order at this point. But I mean, Andrade back I, soon. He, I'd put Andrade. He's going to Collision, apparently, though. Yeah, but I don't know why he has to stay on Collision. I know. Him and Roosh would be an amazing tag team. Exactly. I think. But I, I would guess. put him in Roosh. Like, that's the issue. Is, like, I guess the, the titles can't be, like, I don't know. The whole collision thing is a bit of an issue for me. Yeah, we'll see. Um, This is lame, totally pointless. LFI complained about not getting TV time, but what favors does this do for them? Short little TV time, and they also get made to look like chumps. Mm-hmm. Um, adding on that hook didn't even say anything, and when Jungle Boy came out, there wasn't even a heel turn, which would have been something notable, so nothing really happened here. Not a lot. And I don't really care. Uh, speaking of not really caring at all, uh, Outcast. Yay. Woo. Uh, Tony says he's having a great time surrounded by the world's best friends. Uh, wrong faction. Uh, Tony said that there's nobody good enough to carry her bags in AEW because she was talking about like how she paid her dues and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, Ruby said that Tony is gracing AEW fans with their presence at AEW House Rules shows. And uh, Tony said the only lucky people here are the fans. Did you see who she's defending the title against at the house show? I did not. It was so at first it was just I think at first it was Sky Blue. Of course. Then they added Anna J. Oh wow. Star studded. And Britt Baker. Weird. I would have just chosen Baker at that point. Yeah. <laughs> like I think so. Because <laughs> Anna J S is gonna win the title. Absolutely. Um so this was lame. I don't care about them at all. And now things are worse because with Storm having the title, now any any title program is required to involve this crummy group right. I don't care about. Now, anyone wanting this title is required to feud with this faction yep. and get tangled up in their nonsense. It was such a random title change, too. Like, I get the fact that Hater was hurt, but, like, this still doesn't work. And I don't, like, regardless of what they had, this does not work. The Outcast story never felt like it was building to a Hater losing the title, so it just feels really random. And honestly, Outcast never felt they were building to anything, if I'm being honest. No, I thought this account, my first thing is this accomplished exactly nothing. Um, Because you you had Storm position as, in my opinion, the least of these three. Now she's champion. I mean, like, even still, she would be the one I would pick to be champion of these three. But that means nothing. It's not how they were presenting uh, it. No, I I know what you mean. And I think they're doing, like, a lazy Mean Girls thing that has been done to death over the past several decades. And it's not that it can't be done well, but it's, like, um, what was the group with uh, Velvet... Sky and Pretty, the beautiful Angelina people. Love. They did it really well for quite a while. Um, and who's gonna be next challenger? Sheeta. Who do you like? I'd be okay with that. I, I guess. guess it's the only way to turn. But anyways, yeah, I didn't think this mm-hmm. was necessary. Yeah. Uh, next we got Chris Statlander versus Nyla Rose for the TBS title. Um, I didn't note a lot from this because I was like kind of half watching. But um, there's a Blue Thunder bomb from Statlander for two, which is better than the one Taya hit before. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a somersault dive off of the apron from Rose, uh, Cannonball into the barricade. Um, then the finish was the 450 splash from Statlander, which was pretty smooth. She nailed it. Yeah, it looked yeah. great. Um, and I thought this was first solid defense for Statlander. I guess it beats a squash match, but what it wasn't the most notable for me. Like I thought it was perfectly fine. Yeah. But um, it wasn't like anything amazing. And I'm hoping I'm hoping uh, Statlander's ring gets hotter. 
because that title needs some heavy reviving. The uh, the network titles, so to speak, this and the TNT title, really need some work. Yes. Ironically, both of them. I like this. Um, I thought it was better than a lot of the matches we get on the women's matches on Dynamite. <laughs> or if you want to like compare kind of apples to apples, a lot of the matches we got with Jade. Correct. I thought this was power versus power. They did some good work in the in a. They didn't get a ton of time, but I thought they did well for what they were given. And I think Nyla's someone they could use more if they bothered to focus on this yeah, division. Yeah, I would like to flesh out her character a bit more. Like I know she's yeah. got the beast thing, which I think is a good start. I just like would to. I I would like to add a little more onto that, yep. and then at least she's not with Vicky anymore because I think like Vicky was a great human manager, but that's run fit. that's run its course. Like. Vicious Vixens was never, ever necessary. But amazing when it was. <laughs> but yeah, it was. It was a great run. nailed the 450, so that looked mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I like the match. Mm-hmm. Uh, next, we go to our main event. Soraya's main eventing. What is this? Amazing. Uh, we get a mixed tag match, which is always my favorite. Like, I would Not love a fan these. either. Uh, Baker and Cole versus Jericho and Soraya. Yep. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Cole and Jericho had a chop fest early. Uh, Jericho did an eye poke, uh, dumped Cole out of the ring. Uh, Jericho sent Cole into the barricade. Um, then, so Cole, Cole to clothesline. Sorry, I tagged in and Britt was legal too. Um, like, it's basically dueling singles matches. That has to be. Other um, than Britt getting in some mm-hmm. offense on Jericho. Um, Jericho distracted the referee and uh, Outcast interfered. Sheeta came up to of beat course. them with a kendo stick. Um, Jericho went in the ring to get in Baker's face. Baker got out of that and brought Cole in. Jericho is legal as well. Uh, Jericho, I'm sorry, Cole hit a pump kick to Jericho, jumping into Guri on Jericho. Then uh, Jericho avoided a drop kick and uh, Jericho hit a lion salt. Um, Jericho applied the walls of Jericho. Cole got to the bottom rope to break it. Uh, Baker applied her lock draw submission on Jericho. Soraya broke it up because that's the only inter- intergender action you can get. Mm-hmm. Which is like interesting why it's in the game, which I, I guess is that's just a game, so it's not like on them really, but yeah. still. Um, Cole charged with the super kick. Uh, Jericho hit a code breaker for two. Um, Cole and Jericho exchanged some strikes. Then they ran the ropes to double clothesline. Soraya hit the rampage, the that cradle DDT I think to it Baker. Looks okay. I like that move. Me too. Uh, Jericho grabbed his bat, charged with Baker. Cole super kicked Jericho. Baker kicks Soraya to the ring. Uh, Cole and Baker hit double super kicks on Jericho. And I was saying it's very clear that um one member of that couple can do a good super kick. That's right. So. Yeah, and I'm going to assume, I guess, same for Gargano and Candice. Cause Probably. Gar- Gargano, I like how Gargano does super kicks, too. Yeah, they look um, Cole hits the last shot for the win. And yeah. this is fine. Yeah, I don't know if it was main event worthy. I guess That's I, what I was saying. It didn't feel super main event. I think I liked it more than I thought I would, and I guess it means um, the women had technically more than one match this week, so that's a positive. Um, I was hoping Cole was done with Jericho, right? That was my hope, is you had your whatever... You had the unsanctioned match. The baby face got the heel got his comeuppance. Move on. That's the formula. But we sort of backslid into mm-hmm. this. So I don't. I'm hoping this isn't another Jericho feud that lasts. Yeah, that's months. what I was kind of worried right? about. I'm hoping this kind of wraps up. This was not main event worthy to me. I don't think it was bad, but it was just kind of. It was fine, I guess. You. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, it was fine, but like I kn- I know we not we never enjoy mixed tags. Uh, they're just kind of dookie. Uh, we should really do away with these on the whole. Um, I do like we barely get them, but I don't think they're nece- necessary at all. There's really hard to make work when you have so many better options. Not to mention, I hope this feud is over. Also, Outcast involvement makes it worse. Anyways, this is fine. Just not really main event. No, me. I uh, wasn't my favorite. No. Uh, overall, um, I liked a lot of the wrestling on this show, right? Like Blackpool, Lucha Brothers, and Bandito was really good. I liked the triple threat more than you did, I think. I also really liked the um, Gates of Agony match. So Yeah, that was fun. The Callus promo was my favorite segment of the show, I think. Um, the rest of the segments, really, I didn't feel like we're accomplishing a whole lot. So I would have to say that overall, this was a B show for me. Like the in-ring. Um, Nothing like you got to go out of your way to see, but a uh, pretty entertaining stuff throughout, but not yeah. amazing. So a B for me. Yeah, I'm. I saw like when I was looking because World Culture does the ups and downs. I thought they were. I saw they were pretty high on it, and I was like, I wasn't sure. But that. one thing to know is that we did watch this the day of. We did watch it almost live, like only like a half hour behind, probably as close as it, rare for us. As close as we ever do. That's correct. Right. Um. But yeah. So I thought this was solid. Like uh, I thought we started pretty good. The opener was good. Um. Triple Threat was pretty good as well. Um, I enjoyed the tag match like you did. Uh, women's match was okay, and then the main event was fine, I guess. Um, my favorite segment was probably Callus and Takesha. That was just yeah, that sure. was awesome. 
Um, any of the elite nonsense was fine. Uh, Bullet Club and FTR was solid as well. Um, yeah, like I said, the elite thing was nice. Um, and then everything else was okay. Like Outcast didn't care. The hook stuff was kind of lame. Wardlow and Arm was fine. Like this is a perfectly fine show, so I'd say it'd be yep. nothing like amazing, but solid like Fallout. I guess exactly. That's what I thought. All right. Well, that finishes up our Dynamite review. We'll now move into our trivia segment. We'll see what chat GPT has cooked up for Jack in a segment we call Off the Top of His Head. All right. So what if, what do you think is the trivia? What have I done so far the last couple of weeks? Rollins and what was it? Reigns? Or was it Ambrose? No, Ambrose. So what do you think today might Roman? be? Roman. Correct. We're going to oh, go God. with... I swear to God, if they mention that tournament one more time... They might. So I did um, 15 multiple choice trivia questions about Roman Reigns' greatest matches in WWE along with their answers. So this is what they gave me. Ready? Okay. Let's see if we can get one question without a problem. Who did Roman Reigns face in his first singles match at WrestleMania? Lesnar. Okay, so he's one of the options. Explain what Mania was it? Mania 31, and that was the match where Rollins cashed in. Technically, it was a singles match before Rollins cashed in, so technically that's right. No, they're saying it was The Undertaker, and I don't know from when. No, because he <laughs> faced him at Mania 33, but, that, but then he'd already faced Lesnar and Triple H in singles matches. Right. So. Okay, so we're 0 for 1. Nice mm, work. That's not right. Which event featured Roman Reigns' highly anticipated showdown with The Beast? That could be so many pay-per-views. But I think it would be the first one, I would guess. Well, can I just cover all my bases? Was, uh, what, was, what, what was the first one? Mania 31. Okay, so that was option A. What else are you saying? Well, we could do Mania 31. Then I think you'd have to go to 2018. You can do Mania 31, Mania 34. Correct. Uh, Greatest Royal Rumble, SummerSlam 18. Uh, Which was Crown what Jewel, year? 2018? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Crown Jewel 2021. Um... Mania 38, SummerSlam 2022. So they said the answer like is WrestleMania 34. That I guess that could work. But, but their other ones were Mania 31, that works. Mania 33. No. And SummerSlam 2017. They were in the four way, but that wasn't a singles match. I guess that <laughs> like I guess that one kind of works, yeah. All right. Who did Roman Reigns defeat to win his first WWE championship? Dean Ambrose in that tournament. He's not even an option. <laughs> they said Triple H. That was for his third. Wow. So wasn't the first of anything. I was wondering if it'd be like the first of another championship, but nope. no. Not even a first. No. Nope. At which pay per view did Roman Reigns face Daniel Bryan in an incredible singles match? Fastlane twenty fifteen. They said Fastlane twenty nineteen. Was <laughs> that a thing? Yeah. It, but, but that like, match was no. not there. No, because that was when Dan O'Brien was doing the Planets Champion. Oh, right. And that was when the Shield had that match. Planets Champion. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, who did Roman Reigns face in his classic match <laughs> inside Hell in a Cell? There's, a, like, there's only been one? <laughs> Who's the classic one? Who's he been in Hell in a Cell matches with? Uh, Rusev, That's Braun on Strowman, That's on Bray here. Wyatt, That's on and here. Rey Mysterio. So they have no Rey Mysterio, but they have Seth Rollins in there. So which, which one is the classic one? Come on. I w- Bray, I guess? <laughs> yeah, that's what they, there you go. Chat GPT's right. I guess that works. Which event? I'll feature, give them that one. Which event featured Roman Reigns' emotional and triumphant return from his battle with leukemia? Like, in ring? I don't know. I guess Fastlane 2019, technically, because that was the Shield match. They said Royal Rumble 2020. No! <laughs> Not even He'd tw- been back for like almost a year at that point. <laughs> I love it. Who did Roman Reigns face in a brutal no-holds-barred match at WrestleMania 37? No one. <laughs> that was when he had the... Remember was the triple threat with Edge and Bryan? That was really good, actually. That's funny, because yeah. they're saying Kevin Owens. No. <laughs> he already beat him at... He faced him... No, because he faced him at TLC, which is a TLC match. Then Rumble was the last man standing. Then they had a cage match on SmackDown. So it's n- not even right, because none wrong. of their matches were no-holds-barred. Actually, well... He, they did have a no holds barred match, but that was in 2017 at Royal Rumble. At which event did Roman Reigns defend the Universal Championship against John Cena? Uh, SummerSlam 2021. Well, hey, nice. nice. <laughs> they Nailed got it. it. Yep. Nice. Who did Roman Reigns defeat to become the Universal Champion for the first time? Uh, Lesnar. Correct. Oh, we're two for wow. two. Wow. Two in a row. 
Which event featured Roman Reigns' intense rivalry and match against AJ Styles? Wait, what? Which event featured Roman okay, that, Reigns? Okay, there's two. Pick one. Or tell me uh, both. Payback or Extreme Rules, both 2016. So the Extreme Rules and Payback are both options, but that's not what they chose. They went with Money in the Bank, 16. No, that was... That was when Roman faced Rollins after he returned, and that was the first uh, AJ Cena match. Nice. Who did Roman Reigns face in a brutal last man standing match at Stomping Grounds 2019? He's already shaking his head, folks. No, he didn't. Go ahead. What's wrong? <laughs> I'm just going to say he didn't. He did I know he didn't. I don't... I, They're saying I know there was not a... only did he, it was against Braun Strowman. No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what match he had. I don't think that's right at all. Actually, I want to see the card because I don't remember Stomping Grounds. That so Stomping part. Grounds 19. In the meantime, at which event did Roman Reigns have an epic encounter with the fiend Bray Wyatt? I can give you the options because that's did. kind of ambiguous. Um, Hell sure. in a Cell 19. No. TLC 19. No. Clash of Champions 19. No. Survivor Series 19. No. Okay, because <laughs> Hell in a Cell 19, right? That's the answer, by the way. No, because that was, remember when he had the crappy match with Rollins that yes. everyone hates? Yes, I did um, hate it. Then, okay, give me the other options again. Uh... TLC classic okay, champion. So that was when Bray Survivor faced Series. Miz. Remember, he was Universal Champion. There's a non title match. It was Funhouse Bray Wrestling. Sure. Clash of Champions was when Rollins <laughs> defending against Strowman and Fiend attacked this is Rollins his brain, after. Folks. And Survivor Series was Fiend facing uh, Daniel Bryan for the first time. Right. Before he shaved his head. Gotcha. So, yeah. No. Who did Roman Reigns face in a thrilling match at WrestleMania 37 that main evented night two? That was the triple that I talked about with Brian and Edge. So he got, they got Edge, so we'll give chat GPT half a mark for that <laughs> yeah. one. Okay, did Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns beat Drew McIntyre on Stomping Ground? So. Not according to chat not GPT. Even, it was, is Strowman even on the card? This, this show is not an endorsement for this AI I <laughs> no. at all. Strowman's not even on the card, by the way. Nice. <laughs> Which event featured Roman Reigns' dominant performance in the first ever Greatest Royal Rumble? Which event featured that? He wasn't even in it. How dare you. Greatest Royal Rumble 2018. Okay. Well, <laughs> that, they only got that right for that the match was on that show. But A, he wasn't even in it. B, he was in a different match on the show. <laughs> C, Braun Strowman won it. Nice. So, <laughs> who no. Did, final one. Who did Roman Reigns face in a brutal and personal match at WrestleMania 33? Taker. Hey! Ding, ding, ding. So what did they get? Three and a half? Didn't they also claim that he faced... That was, uh, they also claimed that was his fi first singles match. Never mind. Okay, so that... Three and a half out right of 15, I think, mm -hmm. they got. And you got... I don't, I don't even know how to grade you on this because <laughs> every question is flawed. But anyways. <laughs> Pretty much. So Actually, we'll, no, there's a few that were okay. We'll move back into talking about some of the week's wrestling stuff. Things we liked and didn't like in what we call high spots and rest holds. All right, so going all the way back to Monday, what do you have for this week's Monday Night Raw? Anything good or bad worth talking about? Um, I think I got a couple. I don't know. It's one of those weeks where I'm kind of scrambling for stuff because there's not like a, a lot that grabs me. Fair enough. Um, yeah, there's. I had a rest hold for Trish Stratus and Zoe Stark. Just from what I saw, like the whole Trish thing is really lame. I've heard bad things and as well. I don't think it's doing Stark many favors, and I feel like that's going to kind of suck for her. Yeah. I've heard that Trish, sound, Trish sounds really bad in all of her... They were carrying around shirts that say, thank you, Trish. Like, that just doesn't seem like a, no. a winner of a gimmick for me. No, I've heard bad things. Yeah. Um, and then the other one was um, kind of a high spot with Baszler and Rousey winning the tag titles, just if only for Baszler Baszler's doing sake. something. Yeah. But, like, I, I'm worried she's going to be a tag team lifer at this point I for think, the women's tag I Which, her... that's even more of an insult for the women's division. Seems like the singles possibility is kind of not that there anymore. That just makes me sad. Like, yeah. I was literally watching a video of who lost the most in 2022. Yeah. Like, top 10, like, worst loss records. She was in there. That's horrible. Like, the, literally, the first thing they said was, like, compared to Cole Tolick, because that was their video. It was, like, first thing he said was, like, if in 2018, I told, like, if in, in 2018, I told you that Baszler was going to be, like, have, like, one of the worst win-loss records. It's crazy. Like, it's, the fall from grace is insane. I don't know what it is, because she I should guess be a killer. At, at least she has a title again. Maybe she'll do stuff. I, don't I know. guess. That's it. All right. Uh, for, and then I have one for SmackDown later. Okay. All I have is NXT, a bunch of things. High spot, the opening match, which was, believe it or not, Dolan and JC Jane. They actually had a pretty entertaining, it was a weaponized cage I match. I thought that table spot looked kind of lame, though. To finish this feud, I think. I thought it was okay. Just, um, I don't know. They could have done more. 
We could have. We got spine buster on a garbage can, suplex onto chairs, neck breaker on stairs, cannonball into the corner with a trash can behind it, the kick to Gigi's head with a trash can behind it. Um, and then we got an avalanche choke slam through a table by Dolan for the win. 13 minutes, which I thought felt like the perfect length for this, basically. It was a lot better than the stuff they've been doing together previously. And maybe the use of weapons helped to hide like some of their limitations in other areas. So mm -hmm. uh, I was entertained by this. I just really, really hope this is, in fact, the end of this feud and they can move on to something else. Um, I also really liked Noam Dar and Carmelo Hayes had an interaction sort of in ring. Maybe a little bit long to nitpick it, but I thought they both sounded really good and Trick contributed what he usually does. Dar's is base Dar said that basically he beat Dragon Lee twice because he had two pinfalls, right? So that that's more impressive than being the NXT <laughs> champion kind of thing. You and him twice. And I mean, Hayes, yeah. yeah, right? And Hayes counters that Dar and the rest of his group had to cheat to win, so it kind of took four people to beat Mello Dragon would Lee. would never do that. Um, and then the segment ends with Hayes giving Dar a title shot in the main event of the show. And I, I'm just happy because it feels like they're high on Noam Dar, right? Because he's been all over NXT since he arrived, and that's really good. He's super entertaining in and out of the ring so i am fine with featuring him as much as they have and honestly for anything even remotely affiliated with vince i'm surprised that dar would get so much focus like i don't care how involved like anything under the vince mcmahon umbrella to have so much focus on dar like good for him yeah um and dar and mellow were really strong promos i thought this was mellow back to like almost peak mellow i think peak mellow will take him being a heel but like i thought he was really strong here mm -hmm. um then to contrast that you had cora jade speaking in the locker room oh, okay She's complaining about things, and there's a bunch of other women in the locker room there, too. Uh, Ivy Nile comes in and says that she's tired of all of Cora Jade's whining and complaining. Jade mentioned that the Creed brothers lost on Sunday and that Ava kicked Ivy's ass. Ivy uh, said that they were at least in a fight when Cora was kind of at home or whatever, not on the show. And then Ivy left, and Cora like, waited till she left to say, like, I'm not scared of you sort of thing. And um, they have a match later on this show. Jade just really sounds uncomfortable and doesn't speak like a person would speak. So I still, no, no one talks like I'm still willing to chalk it up to inexperience and that she could get better, but it's not pleasant to watch. She comes across as like a bad actor trying to act like a badass, and it borders on cringeworthy for me. Ivy Nile's not a ton better, but um, and this was just directly after the Stark Mellow segment, so it was a pretty stark contrast to have. Um, Another wrestled for sure. NXT tries to explain away the abomination that was scripts. So I don't know if you <laughs> saw this, but he had backstage with Axiom and Axiom calls him Reggie. And Reggie says, yes, Reggie is my given name, but my people call him scripts. And he's like, what do you mean your people, your friends, your family? And he's like, definitely not my family or whatever. Anyways, Reggie thanked Axiom for opening his eyes by when he ripped off his mask in their match. And that's why Reggie came back to help Axiom with da Daba Kato last week. What? So it's kind of them going, we can't do this scripts gimmick anymore, but how do we explain him having this name scripts? Honestly, I think they're better off just pretending it never happened. And they're kind of doing that, but they are going to keep the name. No, I, I mean like straight up. Yes. Just what? What's, what is, what's the script? So I commend them for regretting the scripts gimmick, and they should have fired whoever thought of it and whoever approved it, but this was kind of a clunky way to get rid of it, right? And I still don't like Axiom being tangled up with this because he's awesome, but... Um, yeah, they should have known right away. Scripps was a terrible idea. Uh, good tag team match, I thought. The Dyad took on Tyler Bate and Wes Lee. Um, I guess Tyler Bate's showing CIM loyal to you, Wes Lee, just because I wanted a title shot doesn't mean like you have to hate me. Uh, entertaining match. The Saw the arrival of Mustafa Ali, right? Who got a really good reaction from the crowd. And he's the type of guy I do want coming to NXT because he, he fits the mold. He's talented in ring. He's drastically underused. He can talk. He can wrestle. So I, I like this. Um, so he kind of shows up in the crowd and both of the people or all of the people involved in the match sort of notice him. Uh, we get stereo spinal taps at one point. Wesley hits a dive to the outside, allows Bate to hit the Tyler Driver 97. Baby faces win in about 10 minutes. Um, and I think, I quite like this match. I think I might have preferred it to the Creed Gallus match from Battleground. Um, and the Dyad have been looking really good lately, just in time for them to have their contracts expire, unfortunately. <laughs> a bit of a rest hold was Tiffany Stratton coming out to address the locker room as the new champion. Uh, she basically wants the division to come out and honor and congratulate her. No one does. And then she sort of implies, well, 
you should come out if you want to find out who my next opponent is, right? So then they all do come out. Then she sort of takes shots at the locker room and the fans. Um, and it ends up setting up a battle royal for number one contender next week. And I like I feel her. Like a, they've done that already. I I think I felt it felt they did it recently. Too. I like her a lot, but I think having her oh, do that was um okay. I don't know if they did, sorry. I don't know okay. if they did one after this, but I the last battle royal I can remember. And it's not like crazy long ago. Was that was when Toxic Attraction got the title shot against right. Perez. So right. I, that's the most recent one I can remember. That had to be like February ish. Yeah. So not too long. So same like, this year, right? Like, um. I think just having her do a live promo that was this long was pretty big ask. She sounded fine, but she usually sounds better. I also think when she first came out and was talking, the crowd was really behind her. And I feel like it threw her off. She uh, she sounded a bit nervous for the first time in quite a while. And the crowd was not supposed to be cheering her. So I, that might have thrown her off a bit. Um, I like the mystery attacker being revealed. It's Blair Davenport. And I'm fine with that. Um She's pretty good in the ring, and she's been gone for a while, and at least they're trying something impactful for her return, so we'll see where that goes. Uh, Stax and Coffee had a pretty good TV match. Aggressive. Um, Which Coffee? Uh, Joe, sorry. Stax selling really well. He just, his uppercuts and stuff look really aggressive, and I like Joe Coffee's style as well. Bit odd to see Stax as a baby face, and I'm honestly not sure if Gallus are face or heels at this point, so it's a weird dynamic, but a pretty good TV match. You had a belly 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 to belly off the top rope by Coffee, and then he does a leaping forearm discus clothesline, and he won in 10 minutes. Uh, rest hold Von Wagner was on TV. Enough said. No, <laughs> uh, that's me. Um, but now he has anger management issues because of this whole photo as a kid, and he's taking it out on, um, what's his name, Luca Crucifino. So apparently because he got DQ'd once, uh, Stone is like, you have man- anger management issues and you need to go to therapy. And he says he'll think about it. So he just his delivery of stuff is awful. Uh, the final thing, I thought the main event was pretty solid. It was uh, Carmelo Hayes obviously successfully defending his title against Noam Dar, but a good 12-minute match, really good pace to it, competitive, which is great for Dar. Uh, you had Trick taking out Mensa on the floor and Trick gets sent to the back by the ref. Really nice back fist by Dar, but then that's a quick cutter followed up with by Mello. Uh, Fraser and Dragon Lee end up coming out, and Hayes dives onto Dar and Mensa at ringside. And then back in the ring, he hits his, what is it, the top rope leg drop? The, Nothing but net. That, he hits that and picks up the win. I thought Dar looked good in a loss, continues again to just get a ton of attention on this brand. And Mello looked better here, that, possibly better than he did against Braun. Uh, and then the big surprise, ooh, is that Baron Corbin shows up, right? <laughs> Takes out Carmelo Hayes and with the end of days and then holds up the title in, as the show goes off the air. So I'm um, of two minds. Like, Baron Corbin was actually kind of cool. He was in NXT. He was the lone wolf character. And he has a cool moveset, right? And he's better wrestler now. Um, but he's been portrayed but he's as a been loser tainted, for the right? past year. So unless they're going to somehow try and repackage him or explain something, I'm not super big on it, but he could be a good big man in NXT, honestly. If he just goes back to like, he's got cool moves, right? The I want an alone wolf again. Uh, that's what I'm saying. And But he'd have to grow all his stringy balding hair back for that one. But anyways, so if they're going to do, he, they could do something with him that I would enjoy. I'm not super confident they will. But so we got two returns, debuts, whatever you want to say. I think with, one's a return and one's a debut. Right, with Ali. So they're trying this whole uh, forbidden door seems to be open from, for the free agents to, from main roster. So we'll see how it goes. Um, so no impact for me. You said you have one thing from SmackDown? Yeah, I just have the Bloodline stuff, which, I, okay, I guess wrestled would be the new belt. Yes, <laughs> which you we talked about and is not super impressive. It's not. It's so lame. Anyways, the uh, high spot was the bloodline stuff. There was a Roman celebration. There was like kind of like a fake makeup thing, like because yeah. Jimmy was kind of still out of line and like when they hugged, but then Roman was like, "No!" And then Solo turned on the Usos. He Simone spiked Jimmy. Simone Spike, so deadly. He's, he's siding with Roman, I guess. I guess that makes sense. I kind of figured. That's... Jimmy's all like, "I gotta protect my brothers." Exactly. And you should be respectful. <laughs> exactly. But he didn't be respectful. How dare he? Yeah. And that's it. That is it. And did you say you didn't have figuring? No, I was like, it was a I big was one last like, week. there was a bunch of stuff, but then no, they were literally like revealing it as we were doing it. So oh, like, right. we pretty much got everything. Nice. So we'll bring that back next week. That puts us at just over two hours for episode one hundred and fifty. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for listening. Any amount of time you do, I'll throw out our contact info: email fnswrestling at gmail.com, Instagram fns underscore wrestling underscore podcast. 
I promise a reply if you have any suggestions, complaints, concerns, suggestions, whatever. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. And we'll definitely be back here next Saturday for episode 151. Until then, everybody, take care.